Uh, what up? What's cracking? How's everybody doing today, man? Hope everyone's doing fine. Hey. There's my crew right there, my team in the building. Uh, Let me yeah. real quick. And Shout to every Carl. Oh wow, we have a new we have a new one inside the building today, man. You guys are gonna have a have a treat with this guy. Um, he has stumbled upon us right after uh, the the I am Thompson episode. It was crazy. He came in late, and we're like, "What the hell?" Like, right when we right when we stopped the interview, uh, Carl rolls through the building. And now he's here with us. He's he's gonna be coming and going, coming and going, man. But uh, yeah, that's what Carl does. You know, I, yeah. It's random. It's I'm weird. Spontaneously for like a year now. It's Here's Carl's daughter. His presence, is, <laughs> his presence <laughs> is never really welcome. He just he's just kind of here. So I, I, know, I hope we I hope we back. keep Carl at bay for most of the episode. That is a cute kid. I'm not gonna say you know. So maybe it isn't Carl's daughter, but uh, shout out to everybody who uh, tunes in. Shout out to all the subscribers, all the supporters, man. Very you know much love. We all appreciate you very very much, man. If you're new to the channel, please. Do us all a favor, subscribe to the channel, give us a like, give us a dislike, give us a comment, give us some sort of feedback. Really appreciate it. Shout out to the one and only, actually, my bad, John, not the one and only, but shout out to the uh, sponsor of the show, which is Cold Blooded Cafe right behind us. That's www.coldbloodedcafe.com. You want the bombest, the freshest, the bestest rodents delivered at your doorstep, $30 flat rate shipping, packed professionally. It's, I mean, it's as good as it gets. It gets you excited to get a cold blooded cafe box at your doorstep. You know what I love? My favorite thing about those boxes is love? the fucking penguin logo. I love that penguin, dude. That's like so. Maybe that's what keeps the box fucking frozen for two weeks. I don't know. Or it could be all the dry ice you guys pack. I don't know. But, um, either way, you have the triple wall boxes or the double bag. Listen. These guys put a lot of time, a lot of effort into doing what they do, uh, you know, and they're truly passionate about it because they don't stop doing it. They're nonstop. So shout out to the shout out to the Cold Blood Cafe, um, you know, captains over there, man. You guys are killing it, man. Keep doing all that. And then, like I said, John, my bad. This we do have another sponsor. the The newest and the latest sponsor for the podcast uh, is John over at Sim Containers, man. Please, guys, if you have eggs. They should be in a sim container box. I'm telling you that right now. Okay, they, uh, they, they you can't beat that. You know, what I'm saying the humidity is on point. Um, I got condo eggs in there right now. I'm super stoked. Um, and yeah, he has extra large and small boxes, so it's gonna be super, super awesome. Make sure you uh, please follow us on Instagram, um, Unfiltered Reptiles Podcast. Uh, we just got that page up just over a month ago. Uh, so make sure you stay on top of that page where we do, you know, clips of uh, previous shows and uh, be doing random giveaways on stuff like that. And Maybe. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Desiree, before we get started with our cool ass guest that we have on for uh, today's show, you picked the comment and I forgot who it was. Who's the comment of last week? Can you want to just pull that up real quick? That way we could, uh, you know, send this person a Red Mountain Herp. Sticker from our man Mar Marshall Mendez. I think that was episode <clears throat> shoot 16. I can't 15. I can't recall. Oh, oh and uh, it's gonna get noisy in here. Hey, dog, we're recording. A, I think we had a toke gecko for Steven's episode. There's always something, yeah. Um. Why they're doing that, guys? Please in the uh, in the description below, we have all the links to the Buzzsprout um, uh, platform. If you want to go through Buzzsprout, if you want to watch or excuse me, listen on Apple, if you want to listen on Spotify, all that good stuff. Link in the description below in case you guys aren't the whole YouTube uh, should do fans or every whatever. one of those platforms and download it everywhere. Yes, if, if you want, that'd be great. Show. Uh, download it on every platform. Hello. Our strike land of high desert herbs. Do you want to like show the comment and just like kind of like that way the the you know hopefully she could see what it is and we'll we'll reply on that comment. I can't even see it. You can just go okay. Oh, here I'll send it back to you. Jessica Strucklin or Jennifer Strucklin Strucklin Strickland. Okay, high desert herbs. I think I know who she is on Instagram, so we'll reach out to her. So hey, sick ass comment though. What's the comment say? You want to just read it real quick? 
This is my new favorite episode. It was amazing to hear Desiree's story and how everything came together. She is a huge inspiration and not going to lie, she is a total boss putting her headphones on with a gator in her hand. That was a little sketch. Damn, she pretty much nailed everything about that episode. Good job. (laughs) I love her. Yeah. Sick ass, sick ass homie. Right on. I guess we'll send. Um, <clears throat> I guess we'll uh, reach out to her. You'll 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 hit her up, right, Des, or I'll hit her up. Yeah. Either way, we'll figure it out. Anyways, right on, guys. Welcome to tonight's show, man. Episode twenty-two. Uh, another one that Stephen facilitated. Damn, Stephen's on fire. Um, but super excited about this guest, man. I've uh, stumbled across him more more. You know, obviously after hanging out with Desiree and Stephen, you're gonna you know you're gonna come across some other instagrams you didn't once follow and i'm thankful for them because i came across blake wilson's and holy shit man this guy fucking has some really amazing shit so when steven's like yo we got him i was like all right steven says we got him has to be hot so let's do it um here's our man right here blake wilson over at blake wilson reptiles what's up blake how's it going i'm we're doing great how are you doing bro i'm doing good i'm excited to be here Dude, we're stoked. I've never been on a podcast. Oh, phew. even more stoked now, dude. Oh, yeah. I don't want like, the thing is, bro. I mean, you might get hit up to do other podcasts, and I just don't want you to get let down because this is fucking the podcast that you're gonna you're gonna have fun, the most funnest on this podcast. <laughs> any other podcast. Yeah, the best well, hell yeah. On this on this ride that you're on, the tires never go flat. I'm just telling you right now, okay? So <laughs> it's gonna be a smooth ride, my man. Um they, they, they laugh. They laugh. That was a good one. You know that was a good one. <laughs> First time I ever said that one. That's why they're laughing. Didn't see a comment. So. <laughs> Dude, Blake, man, welcome to the show. Um, everything okay on your side with the COVID shit? You know, I know we're, we're finally dying out. How hard and serious were you taking it on your on where you're at? I mean, what's going on in uh, your For me, it wasn't so bad. Uh, I did get laid off for about a month, but I'm back at work now. And uh, actually, I've been. The animal sales have never been better. I've been, people are bored and they're spending money. So I, that, that <laughs> stimulus check came in and everybody started buying shit. Dude, for sure. That that's. I mean, if you're if you're if you if you're really like you know, I mean, just think about it. That that's at least two cool two cool reptiles with that stimulus check. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, anyone's gonna be stoked with that for sure. So I'm sure fucking sales. I mean, sales aren't hurting. Period. I mean, talk to yeah. them. Your sales are fucking through yeah. the roof right now over at Cold Butter Cafe. Yeah, it's been crazy. I've I've sold stuff, you know, in the past past month that I've been sitting on for over a year. Just the higher end stuff, but people have money now. I guess that a little stimulus check, and are willing to spend it. Well, I can't wait to speak about the the high end stuff that you were that were that you just mentioned, man. But uh, first and foremost, man, give us a little background information, if you don't mind, Blake. I mean, uh, something I want to know personally is kind of like when did this become Blake Wilson Reptiles, and uh, what led up to it, if you don't mind. Okay, well, uh, well, like everybody, really, I was, I was always fascinated by by animals when I was a kid, especially reptiles. Uh, I think I was twelve. I got a ball python for Christmas, and then just from there, I, I kind of just kept researching, kept looking into them, and I really, really wanted a Burmese python. That's really what what took off for me when I was about uh, fourteen. I think I went to a little pet store, and they had Burmese pythons, and I. Had a little bit of money saved up, and I, I traded her a, a a spider or something that I had. She gave me like a ten dollar credit, <laughs> and I bought. I paid for the rest of the Burmese python, and then I started buying more and more. Got into breeding them. I think I bred my first Burmese python when I was uh, I just turned eighteen, and I got eggs and hatched those out. And that was in two thousand uh, two thousand twelve. So that was almost that was eight years ago. Okay. And, uh, just from there, I just kept growing and growing. I got into retics, and I think that's what uh, most people associate me with is is like the retic community. Which I'm kind of trying to get away from it. I don't want to be, you know, considered a retic bro my whole life. So, <laughs> Good call. Uh, I have I have a whole lot more than just retics, but I think most people consider me a retic guy because I've I've done a lot with retics, a lot of the morphs and stuff uh, over the years, and that's a majority of what I sell because I produce a lot of them. And from your experience with retic people, right? So, I mean, or the retic community, whatever you want to label mm-hmm. it, right? 
is there a big difference between the mainlands and the super dwarf community <laughs> or are they like, like yeah uh, well I, I don't know it seems like a lot of uh, newer people are getting into the super dwarf stuff because uh, i guess the 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 smaller size people like it. and it seems to be you know people are branching out from other communities to get into retics because they can get the smaller ones now yeah for and sure. uh uh the, the the i guess the, the super dwarf people don't have as as big of a head they probably got bigger digs too because us us big keepers we got to compensate <laughs> <laughs> oh man not even fit not even but barely 11 minutes in this is epic that was so <laughs> such a nail on the head man uh just because uh i've had a i mean i think i had a i don't have a lot of retics right but i've had this retic that was uh sold to me to by somebody who Literally, he kind of like paved the way, paved the way for me, and like whatever he told me the snake was, I just believed him. Like it was like, all right, it is what it is, right? But uh, there was a couple times yeah. where he was wrong, and it, it laid on this one snake. So one of my favorite retics, I fucking display him all the time. Uh, his name's OJ, and uh, he's a real pretty fucking snake. And uh, you know, I, I thought well, I was told he was a white face motley tiger, is what I was told. Um, yeah, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if it just because. You know, it's bad when Des corrects you. Motley, Motley, <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. Fucking fight, fight me. Bioga, uh, anyway. Bioga, oh yeah, talk to you. Can't talk on that one, uh, Bioga girl over there. Yeah, um, I know. I, I anyway, <laughs> I was sorry. I was really interrupted, but uh, anyways. So uh, turns out, turns out that. This, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> anyways, Blake. <laughs> Oh, you're, 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 all right, I'm not going to continue okay. to go. I'm not gonna, all right, I'm going to worry about Blake right now. Uh, I'll deal with you guys later. Um, so, anyways, so it turned out that the snake was not white phase. It was it was a lavender, right? But okay. I got approached by a, a tick guy. I'm not going to throw his name out there, but you know, he turns out he's more Facebook heavy than Instagram. And I don't know if someone you know told him to come message on my comment, but he's like, hey man. He's like that's he's like that's a white that's a lavender it's not a white face he's like stop stop faking people like you know what I mean it was some it was like a I dick. think I remember this I think somebody posted this on Facebook or something yes and I saw that anyway so I it got it got to the level because I'm kind of a guy where if you fucking I don't I don't I, you know I'm just like dude I, I have time I have the energy to fucking go back and forth with you I'm okay with that so let's yeah, <laughs> yeah. so anyways this guy fucking hops in the comments and. uh and what's fucked up is like I went to another source of mine that like you know what I mean that was like another good trust and I showed him the snake and I'm like yo confirm with this like for the third confirmation is this a white face or lavender and I showed him my baby pictures and he's like no it's a white face dog that's a white face and I was <laughs> and I was stoked as fuck I was like fuck yeah bro fuck this guy like fuck this prick and uh, dude and then and then you know fuck and I was wrong I was wrong bro. I, I even betted this for five hundred bucks. <laughs> Nope, yeah, I that's what I didn't. That's what I remember seeing. Yep. Is he was upset because he I, didn't get his five hundred bucks. Did I pay him? <laughs> Fuck you. That's, that's all I got to say. Hey, come get your five hundred bucks. Kick my ass. I was wrong. I'm gonna fuck. I ain't gonna pay him fucking. I'll, I'll give him five hundred turds. But anyway, <laughs> I was. Anyways, I was wrong. And then, uh, but dude, I'm that that I was flooded with like we're fucking fools from that. You know that whole. I don't even know where tick where tick community was. You probably know more than I do at this point. Uh, but uh, retake but, bros assembled, man. Oh, bro! Yeah, they they get you. I, I, probably <laughs> blocked, I probably blocked like eighty of those fools, bro. Like, and, and like, I at, least, I at least responded. I at least responded one thing to I wanted to say, and I made sure they saw it, and then I blocked them. That's how I roll. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the last word. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, that happened. So I, I, I got a kind of bad taste in my mouth. I was like, dude, fuck these retic people, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, but it's you know, I, I'm a part of another group. In a that's like more focus on like you know super dwarfs and, and shit like that and never had an issue with any of those fools. Those fools are all sick. So I don't know. It's as best as Facebook in general, dude. You have your groups that are you know pretty cool to you know pretty good to be in where you can learn, and then there's other ones where it's like fucking toxic and shit. And look, they look yeah, for that's, that's almost all groups though, man. I yeah. I've actually I've actually really enjoyed the retic community more than some of the other stuff like. I can't stand the the Morelia groups with the, the carpet python people. <laughs> the, the green tree python people too, man. I, I love you guys, but <laughs> we won't the rest of the rest that. of them guys, I, I can't stand the blood python people are the worst. I can't stand those that group at all. 
I don't know if they're watching or not, but you know, I don't know about the play community. Morelia people watch. That's why if we if we talk more on Morelia stuff, you'll notice Stephen will get up and walk away, and he'll say, oh, "Yeah." Okay. No, like, I love the animals. I have them myself. You know, I have carpet pythons and I have green trees and stuff, but yeah. I don't like the people in them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, to be honest, I, I think it's like what you said. You said that, you know, you're it's majority part of the community you don't like, but you know, you know the right people, right? You know, you know, you know, fucking Steven, Desiree. We got Patrick yeah. Holmes, who's a Patrick Holmes, I feel like is one of the biggest inspirations in the I love Patrick. That's a yeah. good friend of mine. Talk yeah. to him all. He sends me pictures all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do to us? Love that guy. I mean, what do you do? Like, we know you're better. Just fuck off. Like, I know, right? Cool neonates, man. Like, like, awesome. Let me, let me yeah. see. Just mine. Like, you know, fuck that. Sick yoga pose. We all know you have shredded abs. We all know you're. Hell fucking, yeah. You have, you know, zero body fat on you, man. And you're fucking. <laughs> you, and he's one of the nicest guys on earth, too. Like, if you he look at him. not bad about him. Like, no, but I'm just saying, if you, if you just follow Patrick and not talk to him and just see him from afar, he's kind of like, what the fuck, dude, this fool? Like, you either just don't want to get near him or, <laughs> you know what I mean? He just looks pretty loped out, you know, but he's fucking really, really awesome. He's the nicest dude ever. Yeah. Story's amazing. Really cool guy. We have fucking, check out Patrick's episode, uh, guys, in the description below. We have fucking, he's a really cool guy, dude. Anyways, awesome that you know Patrick. Um, he just he can't, can't not, not like Patrick. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Absolutely. Um, so retics, man. So since we're on this uh, subject of retics, I mean, what's your what's your deal with them now? I mean, you're are you kind of thinning out your collection or? Actually, yeah, I've I've been selling. I don't I, I have snakes hatching right now, and I believe they're going to be the last retics I produce at least for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily want to keep breeding them. Uh, and it, it has a lot to do with the amount of people that are breeding them now and how many are produced and, and where they're actually going. Yeah. And I mean, these, these snakes have huge, huge clutches and, yeah, they you know, do. not everybody can handle these big snakes and I don't, I don't work with any super dwarf stuff. I like the big ones. That's what I like. So that's what I've always focused on. But yeah. you know, there's, there's hundreds of people producing hundreds of snakes every year and it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of ridiculous, you know, the, the value's not there for them. And then, you know, there's people that are getting them that aren't taking care of them. And then they'll get them and they'll breed and then they'll, they'll send them to somebody else who will breed them. And then, you know, they just, they're not living as long as they should. And they're, they're not taking proper care of a lot of times. And yeah. It's, I pretty, with that. it's pretty brutal, man, because, uh, you know, I just, uh, I, I, I didn't. I, I started collecting retics before I knew what like mainlands were and fucking you know dwarfs and super dwarfs like how yeah. things were smaller and bigger. But then you know, I, I remember I got up to like twelve retics and then as they were growing, yeah, I, I had the four by twos. But then I was like, wait a minute, dude, with these mate, they're gonna get they're I'm gonna need way bigger enclosures than that. And I was like, fuck, this is too much. And it really, <laughs> it really was like, yo, you need to get practical with yourself. I ended up selling like half the retics I had. Um, invested in like a couple, you know, super dwarf females. And now, you know, even then it's going to, at some point when those are all full adults, which it's coming up in a year or two, I mean, it's fucking, I'm going to have to get strategic and like Tetrix, Tetrix, like fucking shit with my, with my room. Tetrix, yeah. that's whatever. Fuck. I'm I'll kick your ass in that game anyways. Uh, no, you won't. Yes, I will. hundred percent. I'm an 85. Stop. Um, just kidding. Desiree, stop. Desiree's hyper right now. When she's hyper, we are. Dude. Stop, Blake, dude. Stop. All right. So, dude, that's – okay, so what are your, what are your uh, most passionate, like, retic projects? Like, what are ones that, like, you know, kept you in the retic game? Well, what's keeping me in now is is the locality stuff, the pure locality, since we, we can't import them anymore. Yeah. You have you have three subspecies that are, that are recognized in retics, and uh, I want to have all three subspecies, and I'd like to have a few different localities – of each one. And uh, right now I have the uh, reticulata saputre or saputri or however you want to say it. I don't know how it's pronounced. And then there's Jampionis and then there's reticulatus reticulatus. And that's the main lens. That's going to be your Sumatrans and your, uh, your Malaysians. And then the Jampionis is Jampea and your super dwarfs. And then saputri is, um, is going to be your uh, Sulawesi, uh, your Salayer and the, those from those bigger islands that, uh, they have a they have a little bit of different pattern, and I really like those a lot. So the the uh, locality stuff is really what's keeping me going right now, and uh, I'm getting rid of a lot of my adult morph retics and focusing more on the locality stuff. 
Right. Nice. So now, what, what's your what's your collection in full right now of of, of the locality types? Of the localities, I, I don't have a whole lot. I have okay. uh, the Sulawesi. I have uh, Solaire. I'm supposed to get a couple more Solaires here soon. Uh, been trying to get some Jampea retakes because I really like those. And uh, I might I might get a couple pure SD Super Dwarf retakes just to just to have them. What, and my plan is I want to I want to display my animals really. I want to get I'm building a big building right now, and we're gonna uh, be putting these huge cages in that we can display the animals instead of you know putting them in little six by three enclosures where they you know they don't really move and they just you know sit and digest and eat. It's all they do. I want to I want to display them and, and show them off. You know. Yeah, that's, that's really the way to do it, you know, yeah. like, that's just, everyone's always had, you know, the fucking 8x2 or 8x3, but, uh, you know, say what you will about it. Once I saw that enclosure that Brian made for that big, like, 18-foot retic at the Reptile, yeah, it. it's, it's, it's sitting up in the tree, like, yeah, retics a do lot. Like, they're yeah. semi-arboreal, you know? Retics are arboreal, they will tree. climb. And, and they'll climb their entire life, and nobody gives them that option. Babies, yeah. if you put a baby in a big six-foot by six-foot tall cage, they're going to climb all the way to the top, and they're going to stay up there the entire time. Yeah. In my opinion, you know, when when you have such a phenomenal natural behavior like that, this massive snake that will climb, it's it's a real yeah. shame, at least for even for you not to be able to witness it. You know, not, not even exactly. the snake. You know, like that's a exactly. snake behavior. For you not to be able to see that as the keeper, like, I don't know. I feel like. Like along the same lines of you, we we have one retake currently. It's a it's a Kalatoa. We're working with a with Garrett Hartle on a project. But I would you know yeah. I would love personally to get like some big Sulawesi's and make yeah. an enclosure for them. How how big are you yeah. right now? My my snakes are the enclosures. <laughs> oh, uh, I have I have one female and she is uh, I think she's about thirteen or fourteen foot, but she's lean, so she's not. Those things have super fast metabolisms and they grow super fast, but they don't seem to be getting as as thick as like the Sumatrans and the Malaysians and stuff. Okay. Mm. Nice. Well, real quick, so to touch back on the you know, like you know you know retics being arboreal and like to being up top. You know, I feel like the least people can do, you know, for the enclosures they have is at least put perches and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, yeah. That at least will give them the feel. You know what I mean? Like I feel like no matter like what you said. Dude, these fucking retics will climb trees that are like 30 fucking 40 feet tall. You know what I mean? And 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 uh because there's really no limit of like the height that's you know what I mean. I, all I feel like personally is if you do keep a retic, you know, at least give it something that it could perch on or at least feel like it's perching on, um, you know, at minimum, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, so you were tick this year, right? You were ticks this year. How many? How many did you have breeding? I mean, how many clutches have you had so far? What's What's that looking like? I only had two clutches incubating, or one of them just hatched, and so there's it only two clutches. But it was 80 eggs, so you know that. I mean, they have a lot. One of them was 50, and the other one was was uh, 30 something. 50 so, eggs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is just. I mean, if you really think about it, man, 50, and that's only two clutches. Yeah, and there's people that breed 10, 20 retakes every year, and, and I've never sense. done that. I've never wanted to do that. But that, That's some Tiger King shit, man. That don't make sense. Yeah, that, that, exactly. That, that's fishy. That's suspect. And uh, yeah. I don't – it's, it's <laughs> weird. It, like the more – you know, I haven't been in this game too long, but there's things that I thought were amazing and then, you know, come to realize when – like what you just told me, it's like you think back and like, whoa, wait a minute. How's this person breeding fucking ten plus for ticks? Like, yeah, that, that can't be right. You know? Like bringing eggs after eggs after eggs after eggs. It's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like you look around. And you're like, uh, mm -hmm. what's happening? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, I want to see these eggs in a year. You know what I mean? Like, what's I want to see? Yeah. Show me an inventory. Fucking show me a list. <laughs> you know, yeah. even, even if you really got your hands on a list, it'd probably be a fucking depressing thing to look at. So. I think so too. Yeah, that's that's kind of what's getting me out of wanting to breed them. Really, is 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 that issue? My plan period is just to do one one a year. Like if I do want to breed yeah. or pick one project a year, and and that's mm -hmm. only what I think now. I might I might like what you said. I mean, I, I might come to realize that maybe or ticks just aren't meant for me to breed. You know, I'll fucking keep some cool ones as pets if I have to, and keep it, keep it moving. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, now you also work with some big ass monitors too, right? 
Oh yeah, I have I have several different species of monitors, all the big ones. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I know Steven and Desiree love big monitors. Um, they just, you know, Desiree just inquired. Uh, wow, you guys are wearing your black on black. I feel stupid. Um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Desiree just picked up a pair of fucking black dragons from Corey over at Toothless Reptiles, and then obviously they have. Oh. Yeah, they have Crocs and shit. So let's 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 let's, let's start spitting some monitor uh, talk, man. Uh, well, that, are, that hurts my feelings a little bit. I, uh, I have some black dragons that are hatching this month. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Hold that. We need some genetic diversity in these lines. And I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, speak into the mic. Say, say that again. Son. Does, does this work? Yes. Yeah. Carl. Good. Yeah, I'm saying maybe we need to get some genetic diversity in those black dragon lines. You know, get there. You go. Mine are going to be third generation captive bred. I don't know if if Corey has what what his are on right now. I know he's bred several, but yeah. mine are the vital exotics line okay. black dragon. He's it, this is from Onyx and Dark Knight, and they've bred fucking multiple, 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 multiple times. So I don't know. I really don't know. We would have to ask Corey what that is. That, uh, he's got a lot of really cool stuff over there for sure. Yeah, he's local to me, man. He's like 20 minutes or so from, oh, really? from me. Yeah, and I've, I've, I've seen his fucking facility. It's nuts. It's uh, That's awesome. He has 18 feet, 20 feet tall and close. It's like Jurassic Park. We talk about it all the time. It's like a little mini Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's awesome. Steve, Steve, we really, can't, hey, we really can't hear you, dude, at all. For real? Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> all right, is that any better? Kind of. Can you turn up your mic? I think your mic volume's low. Please. Yeah, because it, it, is it me, Blake, or are they talking really, really low? Yeah, I can't, I can't hear them. Yeah, what the? Hell? I can hear you fine. Which one are we supposed to be on? I don't know. Yeah, you do. You did this the other day. Um, is it plugged into the computer? I... <laughs> Where's the thing? I fucking Steve? hope so. I don't even think there's a cord coming over here. No, it's right here, it does. Oh well, is uh, it? All right. Well, they're figuring that out. Whatever. So, Blake. Um monitor breeding right what's how many monitors okay wh where are you sitting at monitor capacity wise like how many monitors are you, how many monitors you keep and all that stuff because you keep your tick uh, you gotta have a lot of room man i don't know how many monitors i have i can <laughs> i got a lot uh okay. we have about i have two black dragons i have a, a head black dragon i have uh some bivitatis water monitors i have a pair of those i have a big guru water monitor Damn. Uh, I have four ornate monitors. I have our two Argus monitors. I have a two adult or adult pair of Croc monitors. I have a pair of Bell's Phase lace monitors. Mm. Uh, I have a uh, a, a roughneck monitor. Uh, some Tegus, things like that. I, I have a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff. Are you guys better now? I don't know. Can you hear me now? I can hear better. Yeah, better. Okay, that was weird. I want the mic. Just speak up. <laughs> like, yeah, speak up. Um, like, I want to like talk black about the black dragons, like your adults and like the breeding and like how yeah. you set your babies up and how you're raising them. Like how long do you let them chill before you just start trying to get them to socialize, stuff like that? Oh, uh, well, I don't, I don't have them. <laughs> you mean socialize with you or with each other? With, with with me, mine, mine from the when whenever they hatched, they were immediately, you know, friendly. Okay. Uh, or one of them was, two of them were. The, the first one I got, Teej, my my big female that's been laying all the eggs. Uh, I got her, and she was she was a pain in the ass, and she was biting me. And uh, what I what I did was I put her in a small cage in my living room with nowhere to hide. And every day I'd snatch her up and I'd hold her for an hour. And I'd sing to her, and I'd kiss her, and do all that <laughs> stuff. And within a week, she was a completely different animal. And uh, I got that that information from uh, Paul Lucas, who produced her, or with with Jim Heck. And uh, Paul told me to to try that, and he had gotten that from uh, Kevin at Nerd. Yeah. And uh, it really worked. And and I haven't had that issue with the other ones. The rest of them came in, and they were super friendly. And Tej is still, she's the friendliest lizard I have. I can sit out and she'll come out of the enclosure up to me and I can pet her. Uh, she really only gives me trouble whenever I'm putting a male in with her. And, you know, if she's not ready, if, you know, I mistakenly 
thought she was and I put a mail in and she freaks out and then I'm yeah. having an issue for a couple of days, but she calms down really good and she's an awesome lizard. Dude, you're a, I don't, I'm, so, I'm just going to say this because fucking Steven's going to tear, tear me apart. Uh, Hal Mahara, did I say that right? Hey, I so, look yeah. at you. Dude, your Hall Mahara fucking scrubs, man. Let's. Uh, how many of those are you keeping? Because I'm a big fan of Stevens, and I, I've only seen really Steven keep. I've seen a couple other people uh, keep them, but just not really hiving that great. Right. So, well, I only have one. I have a big male that I bought about three years ago. What what, what you want for it? <laughs> I don't want to sell him. <laughs> I got an adult female. I can let you borrow him, but I won't. I won't <laughs> sell him. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll talk. He's, go. uh, I got him as a female, actually, and I, and, uh, I tried to put weight on him. And I'd feed the shit out of him, and uh, you know, because I thought it was a girl, and I was like, I can't. You know, I didn't want to buy a male until I put weight on it, made it healthy enough to uh, to breed, mm, and yeah. it just would never put weight on. And I was like, well, this is kind of weird. And I talked to somebody, and they're like, oh, it sounds like a male. And I was like, I don't, I don't think so. And uh, I, that night, I probed it, and that swallowed the whole damn thing. And I was like, ah. Oh. But, you know, it's, I mean, I, I still have him and uh, I just haven't had the opportunity to buy any more. Uh, I'd, I'd love to get some more. They're, they're one of my favorite scrubs for sure. They're really cool Definitely. snakes mm -hmm. and they're calm too. They're not, they're not, they don't act as much like, or in my experience with the one I have, they, they, he's super calm. I can hold him and, and whatever. And he's wild caught and he was wild caught as an adult. Yeah. And he's a lot more easy going than all my other scrubs. Nice. I got my worst bite from Mahal Mahara. Ooh. Oh really? Was, Are y'all not friendly, or it was just like the wrong thing to do at the wrong moment. I, I tried taking it out of a holding tub, just barehand it, and it like kind of turned and saw my hand. And I kind of trusted it a little too much and nailed me on the hand. It was like eight foot. Oh yeah, I hurt. Yeah. From that. Did you? What, <laughs> hey, Steven, what was it? What was going on in your head? Like right when you saw the head turn, did you like think, okay, she's gonna like, did she wasn't gonna bite me, or did you have that kind of thought in your head, like, okay, she's gonna bite me? It was like, like a. Yeah. Like this, the smart move would have been to grab the snake if that was two feet away. But it was the day of the fucking Tinley barbecue, and like bar check, and everyone was outside talking. And I'm like rushing through cleaning snakes. I'm like, fuck it, and it bites me. I'm like, God damn. I saw it. So yeah, it does it right there. It was like every time I've been, every time I've been bitten, it's like I could see myself getting bitten before, right before it happens, and it fucking happens, and it's like Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't happened too much, but you know it's it's fucking when it happens. It's like, dude, you could have you could have prevented this easily. Um, that's why it pisses me off when some people try to say, "Oh, snakes are so unpredictable." Not fucking really. Not if you know your snake really well, you can fucking really see like what the hell this snake, what this thing's about to do to you. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I I don't know. That's just, that's my opinion. Fuck. Um. Anyways, Blake. <laughs> I want to talk about Timors, Blake. I'm a huge Timor Python guy. I love Timors. I keep a good group size of them. Um, I do see you have a really big. Is that a female? The one on your Instagram? Uh, I have four females. I think uh, three of them are adults, and then I have or I have one male now. I had two, but I lost one a few months ago. So why are so I'm not... people fucking like why? It's am I the only one that has four males? Uh, I'd love to have way? one of them. <laughs> Are you breeding them? Uh, I would I would love to breed them. I I tried last year, uh, didn't have any luck. Uh, and that's uh earlier this year I pulled the mail, and because they weren't doing anything, and then like a few weeks later he died, and so now my uh my other male is gonna have to hopefully get going with her uh later this year. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till winter time and try to pair them up again. I'm just gonna feed the shit out of her and hopefully yeah you know she'll build enough to to breed that's what I, I read that paper uh that tracy uh barker had written on it i think i sent that to steven as well yeah. about because i know you have a couple yeah. of timors yep and uh that that paper you know gave me a little bit of insight on what they did and and they were able to you know breed two females that year and i, I thought that was pretty incredible mm -hmm. nobody else is having that kind of luck at all yeah. so i'm gonna yeah. try to try to match what they did and, and see what i can do yeah. If you listen to the uh, episode we did with Bill Brandt, he told us about his Timor breeding method, and it yeah. was uh, it was it was eerily simple. It was in one of those. He, he said kept, he did it the way he bred ball pythons. Yeah, he kept them in like one of those ARS boa tubs, 
82 Perfect. ambient all year, just ultrasounded consistently. And when the when start building follicles, paired them. Yeah. Eggs. <laughs> yeah, everybody I've talked to, it seems like it's just pretty straightforward. They're like, oh, it was nothing. You know, we just kind of <laughs> – same with, with Tracy. She was like, well, we fed them a bunch of hamsters. And, <laughs> and then whenever she built up, we threw a male in there and kept them together the whole time. Yeah. I think uh, I think having I think having them like sustained mm-hmm. in a good spot for a good while, and then you know maturity is a huge part of it as well. Yeah, uh, and then like keeping it simple because you know a lot of people I think kind of overthink it, and you know I mean I can tell you what teamwork are like retics. They fucking love being like on trees and shit. They're boil yeah. boil too, I think. Um, but you know I mean fuck Bill Bill said they're doing it in tubs like like ball python crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, we're um, in there doing something right. Isn't that what it was like this year, uh, Bernice? Yeah. Yeah, everyone's tubs? like, you know, give these give, give scrub pythons these giant cages. And I'm like, I got my Christmas tree tub. We'll see what happened. And I got Whoa. 11 eggs. So I don't know. Something, yeah. something went right. Yeah. I mean, it just depends what your whole purpose is for the snake. Are you fucking like, displaying it and you want people to fucking, you know, give you donations for coming over to see your pad or, or like, are you really trying to just fucking produce shit and, and make animals? Yeah. Cause I mean, I'll tell you what, I always, I always say this, I preach this. If a snake's fucking eating, shitting and breeding, it's a happy snake for the most part. It's doing it yeah. because it's in a good place. You know what I mean? And snakes do it in tubs. They do it in big enclosures. Um, so it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, they could really be happy in a fucking, you know, 20 by 20 fucking, you know, zoo type enclosure. But, you know, that doesn't mean they won't be happy. Like, you know, there's people who like apartments. There's people who like mansions. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. just had a few too many dabs and he starts really philosophizing. And I'll still, I'll still I'll question you. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, they're both so wait, good. what's your favorite monitor species? Uh, the, the croc monitors are my favorite. I mean, there's there's have? nothing better. There's nothing more beautiful. There's nothing more terrifying. It's just it's it's got everything. I, oh, yes. If I could only have one one reptile at all, it would it would probably be a croc monitor because I just I love them. My pair is amazing. They're not friendly at all, but they're amazing <laughs> to look at. <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna breed them eventually? I'm pairing them up soon. Right now, I'm building a, a a big 20 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot tall enclosure uh, outside, and I'm gonna pair them up out there. Uh, hopefully, that's big enough for them to stay away from each other if they're not interested. And uh, so it'll be all outdoors or a combination of indoor outdoor enclosure. I'm gonna build a little area on the side of it that's uh, probably gonna be four foot and then 10 foot tall and then 10 foot long. That yeah. I can insulate and put a light in there because I'm not going to want to have to go back and catch them again yeah. and bring them back inside for the winter, Where which which run? I had to do last year with all my big lizards, which was awful. Where Where are you located? Southeast Texas. Okay, cool. Wow. So we get like we get like two winter. months of winter, so it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, whoever spawns on vibrate, do me a favor if you could just turn that on. just just so it's not like I think like you're I think getting. That's me. I don't. It's not like you're tapped. Oh. I don't know how to. Here, I'll turn it off. There we go. If you can, my bad. There we go. How old are your crack monitors? Thanks, dude. Uh, what my female? I got her as a. She might have been. I think she was less than a year old. She was only about you know this long. She was bigger than y'all's were when y'all had your little tiny ones. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but just slightly. Uh, and so that was. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, when I got that female, she's huge now. I mean, she's enormous. And then the male uh, was actually that one that that girl bought that she burnt up and she was didn't have it in a cage or something and had it running around free. And then light bulb exploded on it. And it has burns all down his back. Is Terrible. And, uh, the girl we interviewed? Uh, I don't know if y'all interviewed her. She, I don't know who she, I don't remember her name. But, uh, she, she's kind of on it. A friend wait, of mine wait, wait. got it from her. Did that burn down like a whole facility or something like that? Are you talking? No, about- no, no. It just—I think it was in her house. It wasn't oh, a facility. Okay. She's just some random chick who bought a croc monitor. Yeah, it wasn't Janet. <laughs> yeah, and this, oh, this, right. and she burnt it. And a friend of mine got it because somebody called the animal police on her or some shit, and they. So he went and grabbed it before they got there and took it in, and uh, he raised it up, and uh, he just decided he didn't want to 
mess with, you know, big scary lizard, I guess. And, and he traded me for it and I was happy to get him because I mean, he's a beautiful lizard. He's got a burn, but I mean, he's gorgeous. Hell yeah. Um, you know, it's, those things are pretty resilient, you know, when it comes to like, you know, battle scars and shit like that. Right. Or, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I know her takes are crazy like that. I know her takes heal like mm-hmm. fucking maniac. Um, yeah. I was just wondering how, how monitors like that heal up. No, he healed fine. He, he's he hasn't had any any issues at all. He's a, he's an asshole. That's pretty much it. I don't know if it's due to the burn or or what, but he's just. Uh, I mean, he's he's perfectly healthy. He eats great. He climbs. He does everything he needs to do, and hopefully he breeds. <laughs> when are you gonna try that? The, this uh, in a few months, maybe. Uh, hopefully next month is. Uh, when I'll have this cage built, I was hoping to get it done this weekend, but it's, it's been raining a lot and, uh, hadn't been able to get out there and put it all together. I build all my, all my outdoor cages by myself and it takes a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was going to ask you, I mean, it looks like you have like a farm style setup. You have porky. Yeah. That's fucking sick. Yeah. Yeah. What's we're really- trying to, we're trying to build a little, a little zoo here. I mean, that's oh. what we've been trying to do for the past few years. And it's, it's slow, slow and it's expensive and, and I'm poor, so it, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, living out in Texas, you know, what I mean, you you don't your animal laws are pretty legit, right? You can pretty much keep whatever you want for the most part. Yeah, yeah, you can you can keep anything you want. There's uh, there's some certain permits you have to get, you know, if you want uh, the dangerous wild animals, what they call it, like tigers or or bears or whatever. But that's just a county permit, and it goes by what your county regulations are. Right, and then uh, and then. Basically, you just go and you register each animal with the county, and there's uh, certain specifications you got to go by on how big the enclosures have to be, and you have to have a, a fence around your property and all this other shit. But you can have anything you want that's that's not native, unless you get the zoological permit, and then you can get native species as well. What's the craziest thing you keep, like wildlife wise? That's not that's not reptile related. Do you keep anything? Not like- reptile. Uh, I have the porcupines that. I've- those are pretty cool. I have a, a lemur, a ringtail lemur. Oh, yeah, I want a lemur. Uh, we're, we're supposed to be getting four more soon. <laughs> we're going to have a whole troop of them. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to be getting a whole lot more stuff here. So I wanted to get branch into some mammals and stuff. And I don't want to breed lemurs, but I want them to have, you know, for people okay. to look at and yeah. stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm probably going to fix all our lemurs, but the, the other stuff I'm, I might want to breed certain things and, so I want to get into some mammals for sure. So do the porcupines like have their little pin things? Like, are they mean, oh. dangerous? Like, oh, they're they're super mean. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> dog got lit up by one when I was younger. Like, oh yeah, mean. these are the ones I have are African porcupines. So they got thick, thick. Those spikes. things get freaking massive. Uh, yeah. yeah, their their quills are huge, and they'll back up on you and try to uh. Yeah. <laughs> They'll try to stick you for sure. One of them super mean. Yeah, I worked with a, a couple of them a while ago at my old job, some babies, and they were really friendly, but like, I feel like that was a, just a phase until they got bigger. It yeah, yeah. Well, some of them, if you, if you, I, I don't know how some people do it. You know, I guess you just, you bottle raise them for sure. And I bottle raised mine. I got one of them. The meanest one I got, she was three days old. And uh, I got her and I tried to bottle raise her and she was just mean as hell from the get go. And I couldn't do anything about it. And I, I love her to death, though. You know, I go out there and I feed them and I, I let them do their thing. I don't you know, I can't pet them or nothing, but right. I feed them. And I, I hand feed them and they take food from me. And they're, they're wow. just they're awesome animals. Do you use a glove or something? No, I just I wear pants and boots, you know, if, I, if I'm out there because they'll, they'll stick the boots and I've had them run at me and, and stab into my boot and I'll have three or four quills sticking out of out of the tip of it. That's wild. <laughs> oh my God. But they're not they're not that bad, you know. Why do you have them? Just for fun? I just I don't know. I, I wanted them. <laughs> so I, the first one the first one I got it was there was a uh there used to be Facebook auctions in the exotic mammal community. There were exotic mammal auctions that you'd bid on Facebook. And uh, I, I bought one in North Carolina, I, the the first one I got, and I, I bid on it, and I won somehow, and I didn't think I would. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> and I had to I figure out how to get it. Line. And so I knew there was a lady, the lady who had the exotic animal 
uh, business in, in Houston. It's uh, Suzette Steidem with SNS Exotics. Uh, and I, I, I called her and I was like, hey, uh, I knew she had porcupines. And I wanted to kind of not be like, hey, go get this for me. So I was like, do y'all have any porcupines? And she's like, yeah, we just had one born. I said, well, I'll buy it if you go get this other one for me. Because they, they had they do a lot of reptile shows all over the country and they were going to North Carolina soon. And it just worked out. So I ended up getting two of them. She went and got the other one and then and yeah. gave me the one she had produced. And so and that's how I ended up with them. And, and I love them. It's been I think they're a year and a half now. And they're they're big. That's wild. Super. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> come visit. Check yeah, y'all out. should. Dude, there's so many cool places in Texas that just fucking like I have yeah. sick ass animals, man. It's kind of like uh and Texas is so big, it's huge. So it's yeah, like it really like, is. It's not like you can do a one stop shop, like you have to literally mm-hmm. like plan accordingly where you're gonna hit up. Yeah. Um, what, what part of Texas are you again? You're like where what like where demographic? I'm, I'm two hours east of Houston, so that's east the probably Texas. the closest. <laughs> so I yeah, live two hours I, east. I lived in Longview, Texas. How far is are you from Longview? I'm about four hours south of Longview. Oh, so you're south of Longview? Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of on the Louisiana border. You know where Beaumont, Texas is? Negative. Oh, uh, yes, it's. I mean, that's the biggest city that I'm near, but. Houston is pretty much the only one that you're, you would know. I'm two hours east of that. Oh, I think uh, I was kind of, you know what? I was confusing you with Dallas because I was two hours from Dallas. So I thought I was oh, okay. I was confusing yeah. with that. I thought you'd be closer to that because of Dallas. But that's still mm-hmm. sick, man. Um, so with your whole like plan with adding animals and stuff, is there a time frame where you want to have this completed and, and have it to where, because I'm assuming you want people to come by, like, you know, or you want this to be like a yeah. – attraction that's you know in a way right i kind of wanted to do like just private tours and stuff because this is this is where i live you know this is my house i only have uh about four acres that we can build on and uh you know i want to put a really big building with a lot of big indoor enclosures for the reptiles because i want to be mostly you know reptile based but i want to get a few different mammals here and there to attract different people and we'll just we'll probably just do private tours unless i can eventually buy another property and that we could have some kind of public thing. And this is something that I wanted to do two years ago. And that was the plan was to, to get it done two years ago. And it just never happened. I, I'd get laid off from work or, or what I work in the, the oil industry. So it's it, every people, people get laid off constantly. And so it's, uh, it, it was just hit or miss there. And I, I'd get laid off and, and I'd push it back and I'd push it back. I didn't have enough money to do anything. And, now I'm getting to where I was just like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to spend everything I got and and build what I want and, and hopefully get it going. So I can shoot for the stars. Yeah. yeah. YOLO. Yeah. YOLO. Um, man. Okay. So with the monitor game, right. Um, you did say that you did, you, you're expecting some, some black dragon eggs in the next yes, sir. Months, right. Um, yes, sir. other than the black dragons, what else do you have going breeding wise? Oh, uh, right now my 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 Bell's lace monitors are have been locking up. I've noticed them. I uh, found them a couple times, and that was that was super super exciting for me. Uh, I I'm not sure if if she's gonna lay or not. I hope she does. Kind of watching them, and uh, but they've been paired, they've been together since I got them. You know, I got them as babies, and I kept them together the entire time. Uh, and just recently, I've noticed uh, this spring they started kind of showing interest you know and so i'm i got my fingers crossed on that and i have i have my, my argus are paired but they're in a big outdoor enclosure with you know three foot of sand and she digs holes all day long i'm i'm never gonna find eggs if she lays them so it's <laughs> i don't think i'll ever produce argus unless they just hatch out there wow yeah. <laughs> that's wild because think about yeah. like there's so many different like so meaning like Okay, so kind of give me an idea why. I mean, what like there's no reach or no idea where she could lay these eggs because how big the enclosure is, or like how many different. Yeah, it's, a, it's a ten foot by ten foot enclosure, and there's a giant rock right in the middle, like a basking rock. It's just this huge boulder that I bought at a store and I had it shipped in and all this crazy shit. Right. And uh, so she's she's that's pretty much where she burrows all the time where she stays, and then she digs holes constantly you know they're, they're, they're a burrowing species they love to dig and then the big male will dig holes and uh 
you know, I hardly ever see them. They're really shy. I walk outside and they dive down and hide. And, you know, unless I get in there with a shovel and just dig down a few feet at everywhere I've seen her digging, I'm never going to find eggs. And, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know if she's laying any, you know, I have no clue. She's just digging for shits and giggles or if she, you know, actually laying something in these holes or or I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, And then obviously you said, you you know, in the next couple months or so you'll be doing the Crocs, right? Or pairing. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to have them paired up hopefully within a month or so. So this summer for sure. Sweet. Nice. I see your you have Eastern Indigo. Is that is that do you have any plans for that or is that just uh just Yeah, a- uh, I actually bought that last last year at the Arlington NARBC from Ricky Wheeler. Uh he's a, a guy up in Dallas and he breeds indigos every year and he, he makes some really beautiful animals. And my wife actually talked me into buying that. We were we were just walking by and he had it at the show and it was the last one or something and she made me buy it. And uh <laughs> He's, he's growing pretty problem, quickly, man. and I actually just recently I sent Ricky some snakes, and he's supposed to whenever his indigo start hatching, I'm gonna get a an unrelated female for that male that I bought. Nice. So hopefully I'll breed in the next next few years or so. Holla. What's your wife's name? Tara. Tara, very player move, Tara. <laughs> My wife made me buy it. I just I had to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have to you? really convince me. She was just like, I really want one. I'm like, all right, yeah. Most people get their wives to convince them not to do it. And here's your wife fucking, you know, convincing you to do it. So you you're in a good place. Well it was it was that same weekend that, that Forrest bought that anaconda from me. So I had a little bit of money and I was like, All right, I'll just spend it. <laughs> so Forrest had some sort of influence on this, huh? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. What do you know? Well, you know. <laughs> Signature. Um, that's cool, man. Because that's a really awesome snake. Super bucket list for me. I mean, I, I keep a good amount of species, but that's one species I don't keep, and it's like fuck, like high on the They're list. Super cool, super mm-hmm. real intelligent colubrids. I think I'm, I I like colubrids a lot more than pythons because they they're so much more intelligent, and they yeah. they act so much more until they act a lot like lizards do, and that you can see them kind of thinking and and. And the way they act, it's it's really cool to watch them. I really enjoy keeping colubrid snakes. That's why I like scrubs, man. I feel scrubs are like that. Yeah, so, or, yeah uh, absolutely. Dora pythons are like are real similar to that too. Um, I yeah, like I have several of those. I love. Yeah, I, I just like what well, you said. You have several of those. Like you keep a bunch yeah. of opidor. Okay, let's yeah. talk about it. Let's talk about it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. What's your group size? Uh, I have one point two. Ooh, so okay. I got, and they're adults. Uh, one of them's one of them's a young adult, and uh, one of the females, and then the the other ones are are pretty big. Uh, I'm terrified to pair them because I know they like to kill each other. So I yeah, I think I'm gonna wait virus. another year or so. I want the I want the male to be the same size as the female. I want them to both be really big and healthy and stand a chance at the other one trying to kill it. So I, I'm scared. I've heard a lot of horror stories about people pairing them up. So, yeah, I, I have the same thing about mangroves too. I heard mangroves will fuck each other up um, if you're not careful. Oh, really? Yeah, but I mean, you're gonna we're gonna watch the introduction and kind of be there for it for the most part, right? So, are you just yeah. scared what's gonna happen when you're not there? Fucking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've I've made mistakes before. I've paired retics, and I've had females kill extremely expensive snakes just because I, I was careless and walked away uh, for a few hours and came back and, you know, the male was crushed. Uh, they crush and, him? Oh yeah. If a female doesn't want to breed, you gotta, you gotta sit there for a few minutes and make sure she's going to accept him. If she's not going to accept him, she's going to slam him against the wall and what? she's going to, you know, she's going to kill him. And sometimes they'll bite him and constrict or whatever. But I had last year, I think I, I lost two males that way. And it's just, it was stupid mistakes that I made. I was thinking, okay, well, she's not, she's not saying no now. And then I'd start cleaning and then I'd completely forget. And then, you know, I'd come back in a few hours and I'd be like, oh shit. And Dude, yeah, it would, I'm going to get a fucking lawn chair, a 12 pack, probably play yeah. some, might play the unfiltered reptiles podcast old episodes. I don't know, but I'm not fucking leaving 
that whole fucking ordeal. <laughs> that's scary. Now, do you, you think that's the case when the male's a bigger size and like closer to adult size, or is this like a younger retic that got murked? I mean, how what happened? Well, well, with me and like most breeders, we we don't keep our males very huge. You know, like my males, they're not getting much over ten foot if they do at all, and they're they're lean and they're 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 not very heavy bodied, and then you're putting them in there with these big humongous you know 16 17 foot females and you know so it's, it's a completely different size and they, they just they crush them sometimes it's it's it sucks and so you had two that ended up getting murked last year right yeah one of them one of them got bit by a female and i was there and i saw it and uh he died the next day and then uh it's just i mean it was just an instant thing i put him in there and, and she just kind of grabbed him and uh, the second one, I, I put the male in there, and this male, this one hurt because it was it was a beautiful snake, and I, I I was actually trying to sell him at that time, and he was he was a pretty high dollar snake, and I had I had a buyer wanting him, and I was like, well, I'm gonna try to you know breed him one last time, and uh, I, I put him in there with that female, and I, I think I was I was just distracted, you know, I, I was cleaning. And at the time I, I paired them up and I just kept cleaning after I put them in there. And, and I meant to, you know, go back and check and see if she was refusing them or not. Cause they'll wag their tail and they'll start, you know, bucking or whatever instantly if they're not, if they're not liking it. And sometimes it takes them a minute to realize he's there before they freak out. And I just kind of hesitated and I, I, I walked away and completely forgot. And it was like four or five hours later, I remembered and I walked out there and he was dead. It was, a, it was a bad mistake for sure, dude. I don't know about breeding retics, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the worst part, part is how the male 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 male. I have it's, I have everything lined up for a 16 foot fucking uh, <laughs> a golden child supposed to come fucking land here in like September. Uh, Motley golden child Motley. Motley. Okay, sorry. Motley, huh? Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Desiree. Desiree pet tuber channel. Okay, she's not pet tuber. But anyway, she is hey. awesome. She's awesome on. She's awesome on TikTok. Watch her get bit. Oh uh, yeah. Just kidding. That was a joke. That was a joke. Sorry, I sorry. That fight, okay. I, I still like <laughs> But um, I have this fucking anthrax male who's like super, He's over a year old, and like he's like he's showing like you know sperm plugs and shit. Like it looks like he's ready to rock, but I don't know. But yep. anyway. I have. I was like, dude, this winter I'll fucking see what he does. But you, now what you're telling me, man, she's a 16 foot retic. She's fucking. <laughs> she's huge. So yeah. I mean, it's not gonna take. If she don't like this dude, it ain't gonna take much to murk this motherfucker. Like, no, it, it doesn't at all. And I've I've had to get in there and stop him. I I have a picture somewhere. I'll, I I can try to send to y'all. It, uh, this this female. I put the mail in, and they were good. She she had accepted them and everything. But a couple days later. I was like walking by the enclosure and I hear a smack on the, on the glass and that male apparently had thought I had food or something. And he grabbed her on the neck and then she grabbed him and they both just kind of, and this was a huge female. This is, this is one of my biggest free tick. And I just instantly opened the enclosure and I reached in and I grabbed her. And so I have a picture of me holding her and then he, they're, they're just holding each other and I'm trying to keep her from wrapping around this male. And I'm screaming to my wife to come outside, and oh I'd end up, gosh. I'd end up grabbing my phone and calling her. It was, it was, it was scary. I thought for sure she was gonna kill that male. That sounded like what happened to me earlier this year. I had fucking two chondros together. Well, I had, you know, a fee, a male that turned out to be a female. So I had two females paired up, and uh, I don't know what happened. I, I think, I, I think I fucked up because I did have food falling out or something. But same scenario. I heard a fucking thug against the tub, and there was like rumbling and wrestling. Man. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I, I look, I look, and the bigger female is just like completely wrapped the smaller female, yeah. and her tail is like slowly just going out. And I'm like, fucking, I'm screaming for my wife, and my wife's not even home, and I, I forget. <laughs> I go in the tub and I fucking with my bare hands just because I want to sell save this twelve hundred dollar fucking chondro. Yeah, and I want to eat fucking twelve hundred bucks. So I, and this is before I knew the stimulus was coming. So. Um, <laughs> So fucking, dude, I, I literally, go, I, with all my might, dude, and I can't imagine her chick, but, you know, 
fucking 2,000 gram fucking chondro that's like with all her might trying to kill this other chondro. I just just ripped them apart. Teeth were flying everywhere. It was just fucking terrible. And uh, I was yeah. able to save it. And uh, she laid eggs, so it worked out. But <laughs> can't, imagine, can't imagine her ticks, dude. That's scary, man. That's um, yeah. Her ticks are no or fucking joke, dude. Yeah, for sure. Or it seems like you just gotta let them go. Yeah, you just gotta let them kill each other. Like, that's yeah, like, I'm, I'm not gonna break up the croc monitors at all. I'm not. There's no. not. That's not happening. They're just gonna have to do something. We have it at Tom Crutchfield. Jesus, he's lucky to even have his yeah. hand. He got, he got tapped. He got tapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was nothing, and it ripped him open. Was, oh. Dude, it's yeah, it's like it's like with the uh, with crocodiles. Like sometimes uh, places that breed them will like tape the mouths up when they introduce. For that yeah. reason, like. Fucking wish you could do that with the croc monitor, but uh, I feel like that uh, doesn't work the same way with monitors as it does with crocodiles. Yeah. But... No, that might just piss them off. I don't know. Yeah. I would just uh, pick, can you I would keep any crocodilians or you want to? I would love to get into crocodilians. Uh, yeah. I, I, right now, I don't have the space, I don't think, for, for larger ones. Uh, I'd like to maybe, maybe get some babies and grow them up, and when we do eventually move, I could dig some ponds and stuff. Uh, Right now, you know, we're limited to the four acres I have, and I have plans for most of it. So, yeah, eventually, right. maybe I would, I would, I would absolutely love to. I, I love Cuban crocs. Uh, uh, the Nile crocodiles are amazing. I've, I've been so tempted to buy them. Every time they come become available, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get one. Then I always talk myself out of it because I'm just, I'm not ready. You know, I want to so bad right now. Like, I want to provide the best for them, so I, I need to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. Private croc keeping is a, uh, it's just like this retake. It's kind of a touchy subject. The amount of people yeah. who can do it versus the amount of people who want to do it. Exactly. A huge gap there. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Cubans, Cubans are fun. A little yeah. guy, our little guy could probably jump three <laughs> feet in the air if he wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, Steven, is that the one where as soon as you open the door, it's fucking like it runs after you or something like that? Uh, that's the, that's the freshwater crocodile. I mean, the, the Cuban's gonna be scarier than that thing. Um, because Cuban not. crocodiles, they're, they're like almost like, there's they're, like a method to get him out of the tub because it's <laughs> yeah, like that, with all the little ones, like you know, you'll grab them mm -hmm. and you're good with the Cuban. You grab it and then you have to like restrain it from rolling in your hands and it's just like snapping its jaws super hard and you're, you know every wow. time it's like oh my god if that was my arm i'd be in the hospital like stitching up that'd be bad and the thing's like two and a half feet long <laughs> it's little <laughs> it's another thing of a crock <laughs> wow hey blake what's the worst bite you've ever taken uh i i do not get bit a whole lot i'm and I'm the biggest pussy you'll ever meet when it comes to reptiles. I hook everything. I hook a baby corn snake. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to get bit by it. You know, uh, the worst bite I've ever gotten was from a 14 foot retic. Uh, I was by myself outside. Uh, I was about to feed. I had a bunch of rabbits thawing out pigs and shit like that. Uh, and I noticed some of the cages were dirty and, and retics, they eat huge meals. And then, you know, then they're going to shit more. And I was like, I got to clean some of these cages before I feed them. So I, you know, they're, they're not going to be sitting in shit for another two weeks. Uh, and so I, I, the first snake I pulled out was this big female and, uh, I was moving her across the room to a different, a clean enclosure. And it was one of those Syntec enclosures. I don't know if y'all seen those are the, uh, the metal framing, the aluminum framing and BBC. They're, and they got real heavy glass doors that, that yeah, pull down. Annoying, yeah. And I put her in there. And as I was going to close it, she shot right back up and grabbed my wrist. And I mean, her head was as big as my hand. And she grabbed my wrist and just started wrapping around me. And I, I just, I mean, I just had to sit there and keep her from getting around my, my chest or my neck and anything like that. And I just kind of held on, on to her until she let go. And I mean, I was bleeding all over the place. But it wasn't anything like, I wasn't ripped open. It was a, you know, it was a, a food bite. She was just holding on to me. I had a really, really bad bruise and and teeth marks all the way around, but it didn't rip me or anything. So I was I was lucky. That's lucky. Yeah. You didn't yeah. you didn't pull away. You didn't pull your hand away. I'm assuming, right? Uh, oh no, I saw her. I saw her coming. I knew there was nothing I could do about it. You know, and it was like you were saying earlier. You know, you, you see it about to happen, and you're just like, oh fuck, uh, I fucked up. You know, and <laughs> she grabbed me, and I knew exactly why. Right when she did, I was like, oh, I got all these fucking rabbits laying around. She smells all this shit, and. Yeah. You know, of course she's going to be thrown right into feed mode. 
it's never the snake's fault. Like it's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's oh, not. One, one time a scrub was a total dick and bit me with the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were fucking with it though. You it's don't fuck owner. with a dick scrub. Look at his owner. Look at his owner. It was. It was not the snake's fault. <laughs> we did it. I was doing it a fucking favor. It was sitting in shit. I'm like, you know what? I was take care of you. And it's like, hey, fuck you. Bite my. Like, <laughs> stop, stop blaming the wild. <laughs> Yeah, my dad would always say things like, no, it's the operator. Like, you know, when it was the snake. Not going right. yeah. I did. I've never been bit by a scrub at all because I, I, I don't don't let them bite me. I think it's your fault, man. <laughs> Steven, does, Steven does take high risk. I think I learned, put, I learned putting a scrub around your neck from Steven. I never did that in my entire life until I started watching Steven. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's just yeah, fucking. It's, I don't know, man. I'll probably pay for it one day, but yeah. damn, that snake's cool. It's like a nine he, foot barnack. It's just chilling. Yeah. While he cleans them. Yeah. I've always, I've always liked Stephen's Instagram page because he had when, when I first started following you. I guess it was a few years ago. You had a lot of snakes that you know that I, I kept myself or that I wanted to keep, mm -hmm. and uh, I always remember. You know, you're always holding them, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you know, what's crazy? I don't do that with any of my snakes. I can't hold them. I'm, I'm scared, man. <laughs> I miss, I miss Stevens. Fucking, I, I'm pretty sure in front of your house, right? Where was the, what was the photos you always took at, at your old place? Yeah, yeah. always holding them out. Yeah, it was on beautiful days. Steven, yeah. he lived, he lived, yeah, it was, dude. I don't know. I always, it was such an iconic. Like you know, <laughs> and Stephen Cush fucking pitcher. You just you just knew that was Stephen's work. I just, I just yeah, like exactly. that, like ten snakes drive three hours to Chicago. But hey, mom, I'm taking some pictures. Go out in my backyard. Just you know, some <laughs> vintage Steven. get some get some people get get some people. Yeah, we need some of that. <laughs> yeah, I got. I I remember I came across Stephen shit, and I was like, dude, this guy has fucking everything. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. you know, is a. Uh, Pretty awesome. Now he really has everything, pretty much. You know, for the most part, it's out of control. Yeah. Speaking of everything, your anacondas, man. I love anacondas. You, uh, you, you keep some uh, a nice big green one, or, or do you have a big group of those, or is it just that one? Or I have uh, eight or nine anacondas. How many breeding? Uh, I have three adult females Ooh. and two adult males, and then I have some younger ones that I produce that I that I raise. I'm raising up. Uh, As Emily would say, how many clutches have you had on your uh, anaconda? <laughs> uh, I've I've had four litters over the past three years. Four litters, awesome. Yeah. So and I have I have two more two more this year that should should drop at the end of the year. Awesome. Waiting list or how do I inquire? Uh, I, I don't do waiting list because nobody ever falls through. So. Uh, I'll definitely I'll, I'll remember that you wanted one and I'll hit you up when they're born. It should be around September. Remember it was on this show too, okay? Wink wink. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I want the hottest one, dude. I know I've been wanting to add a anaconda for quite some time and I'm glad it didn't happen in such a rush cuz you know, there's just a, there's a lot of things you just don't rush into and I I have learned that in the last few years of of keeping animals and I'm just glad it wasn't an anaconda that I had to like learn a lesson on, you know what I mean? Cause, uh, I love them. I, I rushed into them. I was 16 when I bought my first and, uh, I was working at a movie theater and I'd saved up the, the expensive price tag of $95 to get my green anaconda. 95. <laughs> That'd be nice. They were, they were cheap, man. They were not, they were imported. You know, they were just filler what snakes year, for the what boxes. Year what year, Blake? Sorry. What year was this? Uh, 2010. What that wasn't that long ago, 2010. Yeah, I'm on, I'm only 25, so I mean I I haven't been doing this a whole lot. You got Stephen very by, long. You got Stephen yeah. by 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I know Stephen's young for sure. He's a, he now he's a he's a solid 19 now. So damn, is he 19? I know we were we were trying to we were trying to find a strip club at Arlington last year for him, but man, they're all they didn't have no 18 and up. <laughs> it was a real shame, man. Waste of. <laughs> <laughs> Scared to get Nido at a script at a strip club. Closed <laughs> uh, down. It's a, it's a bad town. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. You know. I don't really blame people who aren't strip club people because I'm not. I, I get. I feel like I'm like contaminated with shit when I go to a strip club. I don't know. What, <laughs> I, I maybe because maybe out here in the West Coast. I don't know. But I've also been in one in Washington, and that didn't. I didn't really feel too well after that either. The ones in Texas are excellent. They they only put the pretty girls out there. You know, and you know, everything's bigger in Texas. 
this. You know what I mean? I don't know if that That's goes. Right. The strippers but, too, huh? I'm talking about like I'm just talking about like expectations are multiplied in Texas. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Other than your Tex Mex, I'm sorry. That's fucking what. <laughs> What? <laughs> so, so, yeah, you, know, you come to San Diego. I'll show you real Mexican food. This is real Mexican food. I've, yeah. I've never been to I've never been to California, but they I hear a lot. I have a lot of friends over there that say that, but I don't believe it. So bless your heart. <laughs> we'll get you next time you're. We got to get you to a Pomona show, man. Like we got to get you set up at. A, I mean, we love California. Would love to have your fucking shit display. Yeah, I've been wanting to been wanting to go. I wanted to go and help my friend uh, Jeff Kelly. He vends the Pomona oh, yeah. shows, and uh, been wanting to go. You know, just kind of help him out and see how it goes and how he does. And I've never, I've never done any show that big. I usually just do like the the Texas shows, and I've only done the Arlington show once because that's that's kind of an expensive show, and I, I don't, I don't know, I don't like spending money. <laughs> I don't know. It's, from what I can understand, and from what I've witnessed, I haven't been to too many shows, but I mean, I could tell you from talking to other people who've got, who go to a lot of shows, it is money that that that's costly. Mm -hmm. Like it's fucking a lot of work too, dude. Like, yeah, you know, you don't get to go and fucking just go do what you want. Like, you're literally at your table. It's like you're fucking never leaving because you don't want to yeah. leave. You know, like I don't know. Like it's, I don't know. I, I like to have fun, but yeah. ups and downs to it. You know. Yeah, but, yeah, but then again, like I can't imagine. Like I can't wait to see your guys's fucking actual setup. You know, like you know, cold blooded cafe setup. That's gonna be something iconic. That's like something why you'd want to go to Tinley or like a big yeah. show so you could see something that you won't really see at Pomona. Yeah. I don't know why you guys won't be at Pomona. Because it's so far away. Right? Fuck it, Yolo. Yeah, California's far from everybody. Hey, that's, you can that's drive the trailer then. Like I'll yeah. pick you guys up. Let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, we can't mind. hear you, Des. We can't hear you. I'll ship the rodents there. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if October Tenley happens, my, my goal is to have the best table at the show. I want yeah. to do, want to do like our, we have like an end cap typically, but I want to do one more on each side. I think it's booked up, so maybe next March. But it's like Unfiltered Reptile Podcast, Cold Cafe, Reptech, and then a Bronia Alliance. And like I want to have, you know. Baby scrubs, baby inlands, baby annulateds, baby emeralds, the whole works. Like, you know, I want to make a make a stand. Are y'all breeding emeralds right now? We got a litter on the way. Yep. Really? Yep. I want on that list. <laughs> yeah, the list that's like maybe one if we decide we want to let one go. <laughs> I've been wanting some emeralds. I'm just I'm terrified to buy them because I, I whenever I first got, you know, I, I bought a few several years ago, some babies that were supposed to be captive bred and I couldn't get any of them to live. And that really just, it ruined them for me. But I've always, I've always fucking loved them. And I've always wanted to have some really nice emeralds mm. and you know, the Northern or the, the, uh, the yeah. basins. Those are, those are really awesome. Yeah. yeah and, the Northerns, you got to buy captive bred from somebody who can show you pictures of every step. Exactly. Exactly. If and you like, want it, if you want to this, this scale on the snake's head, you see it in this picture of it being born. Like I produce it, you know, yeah. they can actually verify it. Because exactly. If not, it like, you know, your odds of survival are very, very low. Yeah. <laughs> something percent, you know, very low. Yeah. If you want to geek out on something pretty legit, episode 13, Unfiltered Reptiles podcast, Ed Marino, he drops some serious. Oh, really? Dude. Yeah. And he yeah. shows us. Yeah, Over three hours, yeah. He shows, he, shows, he shows his face after never showing his face for I don't know. How I don't even know. They, I'm friends with him on Facebook. I have no clue what this guy looks Nobody like. Nobody has. <laughs> not, until, not until a couple months ago. It was it was my. And he looks he looks like a he looks like a retired assassin. He looks like a, a retired <laughs> like. That's what I pictured. That's exactly yeah, what I imagine. Uh, yeah. He looks like an retired like a retired hitman, dude. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, so he's fucking he, like. What was like machine guns that are like worth five figures and stuff like that. How many, no shit. How many cigars? How many cigars did he smoke? Like a fucking gangster. He smoked smoke like three cigars. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> He's living the life out there, man. Man, bro, he had stacks. He had stacks of baby basins to the ceiling in tub. And like, He's like, oh, I forgot I had that one. Yeah, no one else in the world has one as nice He's as that. Like, this, yeah. bro. He's like, fucking 10 grand, 10 grand, 10 grand, 10 grand, 10 grand, 10 grand. And you're just like, what? It's like, and he, yeah. he, he has 150. I highly doubt, I bet you he has more than like 200. I guarantee it. There, there was the one that, that Pedro wants, see, with the, the black on the neck. He's like, 
Oh yeah, I don't really like the one that much. It was like <laughs> it was like black. I figured for that. Black like, Jason, bro. He's like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> that that was fuck. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta check that episode out, man. But uh, I might have to watch that because that's awesome. I, I, I love his stuff. Those those basins are the, the coolest fucking snakes out there, man. And, and he not, makes them every year, and he makes so many of them. We're not here to com- continue to promote previous episodes. <laughs> we, we even got we even got Ryan Woolison. So Ryan Woolison is like the fucking man with Northern. So you have the best of both worlds that we've already had on the show. You have the Northern, oh, really? the basins, um, yeah. and like out on that shit it's amazing it's so much knowledge you get on the species and it, it makes you it'll make me ex- get it'll make me get excited about working with them basically that's what i'm trying to yeah do. i've always so, wanted to i'm just i'm really scared i had that one experience and it it, it freaked me the hell out you know <laughs> I've, I've, I've had four die on me dude everybody does everyone has a night yeah. experience and that's just how it fucking goes at the end of the day go uscbb done yeah absolutely get babies be patient Dude, yeah, super rewarding. It's amazing. I fucking had a, I have a juvenile that I over, you know, I finally bumped it up to a rat pups and I fed it and I instantly hit up Steven. I was like, I think I fucking overfed one of my nicest fucking. <laughs> He's like, well, oh. Steven's like, well, this is a test to see if it's healthy or not. And I was like, oh my God, this is depressing. Nothing. It, yeah. it perched the next day. It was, everything was, I mean, it perched that same night and everything was just fucking perfect. And dude, it, yeah. it, it, it I mean, the, the proofs in the, the puddings in the proof, whatever that fucking thing saying is. <laughs> proof from the pudding. What a, yeah, I love pudding too. Uh, <laughs> I'm hungry. But uh, yeah, dude, what I'm saying is fucking, if you go USCBB from a documented re- reputable breeder, you know everything's legit, dude. You're you're saving yourself a lot of headache and a lot of fucking you know, yeah. people like pushing like you know oh, small meals or this or that it's like fuck that no nope. we, we have a, a mail from ryan wilson from uh litter i think from three years ago mm-hmm. and uh at the time i i overfed the fuck out of it I, I it was probably eating like a fuzzy rat that you know maybe 13 grams wow a four gram pup even stop talking <laughs> just kidding <laughs> like it it looked like it was gonna pop i'm like oh god i killed a snake and like you know took forever to digest but the thing was fine uh, it was you know it was wild but uh don't do what steven did though no no i'm not it. i'm just saying <laughs> no, don't do that <laughs> yeah, it, it, it worked out i was a, a total idiot but uh, okay, yeah. so other does he still breed them does that, that guy that ryan did he, he said wilkin he didn't, he didn't this year but yeah woolison he has a really awesome Wool- from from last year that he's raising up um yeah I don't know if you saw any of them yet, but uh, yeah, they look they look really good. He's he's a, he's very heavy on the uh, the Miss Willie line, you know that. Okay. That too. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen y'all's, and uh, those are beautiful for sure. Yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look into that because I, I I want some so bad. Yeah. I just don't want to I don't want imports, you know. Yeah. No, you don't. You know, and you know it's. Mm-hmm. Crazy is like you know people like Steven. There's a couple ones who are actually well, actually there's a few out there that are producing beautiful US CBB fucking emeralds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's just really who you research and who you want to work with. You know, and, and there's a quite a bit of few people out there like like I'm saying, but I think Ryan Woolison is just somebody who if you could pick anybody to pick a northern from, Ryan Wolf is the way to go. But it's just not that easy. It really isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. That's why I think Forrest fucking loved him so much because, you know, when whenever Ryan did hatch something, like Forrest was like the first one to like, you know, and Forrest knew like, well, I'm so fucking lucky, but you know, Forrest probably <laughs> talked talk the way he had to talk to Ryan. You know, yeah. salesman Forrest. Forrest could fucking sell anything. So, <laughs> uh, uh, you met Forrest before? Yeah, uh, I met him a couple of times. When was uh, when where did you see did you meet him at one of the shows or uh, yeah we we met him at uh the one at the Arlington show we actually uh I had gotten in contact with him he wanted to get a couple of my my anacondas that I had produced last year and uh then I, I went and met him at Arlington and uh I think we all hung out that night a little bit they come over to the house we had gotten and uh Desiree and Steven and uh, a couple of the other employees and Forrest come over to the house we had. And, that's sick. It was a good time. It was, it was awesome talking to him because I'd always, you know, seen him online and, and and looked up to to what he has done. You know, it's amazing thing he had built and all the animals he had, and I always thought that was the coolest shit. Okay. And then uh, 
he told me <laughs> when I first met him, he's like, you're not as dumb as you seem online. He's like, you actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, I thought wow. that was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> what the fuck? Way to go. <laughs> I took it as a compliment. It was, it was, it was funny. You know, <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking forward. You know, one thing for us, just to kind of cap on what you just said is like, uh, force you to say, man, you remind me of so you remind me of myself so much when I first came in the game 10 years ago, just so like, you know, wanting to call people out so, so dumb and like, well, I'm like, well, you just call me dumb. Like, you know, like he would say it where like, you could almost not pick up and he's like, you know what I mean? And you're just like, you have to go. Back. What you, and then by the, by the time you figured out, you're talking about something else and you're just like, Fucker, like he just called me. <laughs> Anyways, but you're not the only one. <laughs> um, Desiree, so as far as your skills with big monitors, right? Um, where is it that you would like? Is there an area that you would like to learn that maybe you feel like you're not there yet, or and that's something that you can maybe pick Blake's brain with, or anything like I that you can think of? Yeah, I mean, I was trying to earlier. I asked him about twenty questions about and you just cut it off, and you just started talking about Timor scrubs. <laughs> but I mean, because this is my first uh, water monitor. I've only other. Uh, I just have had the like tree monitors. I had some quints for a minute, and then obviously the croc monitors. Um, we have a Yuan away as well, which we don't really interact with much. Um, and now I have a blue tail. But I'm just like beyond excited for these black dragons. And I just, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Just fill me in. But, <laughs> Did you already got them in? Yeah, I have them and they're set up. It's been about a week and I've just kind of been checking on every day and I, I haven't grabbed them yet. Like they're like a month old babies. Are they skittish? They run from you or anything? Or? Um, a little bit. Like when you open it and you kind of talk to them and put your hand in there, they do run and hide. And they have like two hides in there now and then like a, a half cork thing that yeah. stands up for them to reach like the hot part of the cage. So I'm wondering if I should take out one of those hides and only offer them one or maybe none. Or that's, maybe that's what I did. And you'll get... If you are if you pay attention to any of the monitor groups and stuff on Facebook and all that stuff, I... I You'll get different things, but what what has worked for me every single time is putting them in a small enclosure with you know minimal bedding that they can't burrow in and no hides, just a big water bowl and no hides. And it sounds cruel, you know. It you know you want to be able to do the best for them and have them this huge enclosure, but if you want to socialize them, yeah. And this is what I don't I don't know if he got it direct from Kevin, but he told me he got he heard it from Kevin. I didn't hear it from Kevin, but but Paul Lucas told me this method and it has worked every single time I've tried it yeah. and you just put them in there and you put them somewhere in high traffic. I put them in my kitchen, you know, cause I'm always in the kitchen cause I like to eat. <laughs> and so I, I put the, I put them set up in there, in a smaller enclosure, you know, it was, I think it was uh, three foot long, like 18 inches deep, just a, like a zoom med thing. Easy. And uh, so you, they have the proper lighting and everything, but nowhere to hide. And they see you all day. And then every single day I would open up and you just, you just go in and you grab them. They don't go slow and uh, just, just kind of grab them and pick them up and hold them for 30 minutes to an hour. And within, I swear, within a week, they understand that you're not going to hurt them. They're, I mean, they're super intelligent. And I've never had one not calm down that way uh, that I've done that with. And But I've heard, I've heard different things. I've heard give them a huge enclosure and then just let them smell you and then they'll gain trust slowly. But, not you know, it's... It, it's different things, and and I've I've tried that with my my ornate monitors and my croc monitors, and they still fucking hate me. So, uh, <laughs> I probably should have tried the other method when they were smaller. But I I'm not about to reach in and snatch up a you know a six foot croc monitor and yeah, force it to I'm let me hold him all day. Grabbing them like, I, really? I, the true monitor bites are worse than that. Like the one little one already gave me a little bite, so it's okay. It didn't even break the skin. Kill the tree monitor? The, no, the okay. black dragon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thought you said tree monitor for some reason. The tree monitor bites do hurt. They're nasty. Yeah. I love those. I, I've wanted to get some. I just, I don't know. They're small I, and I like big I things. I've having some babies from the oh, really? dry and what? the um, Cusinus. 
Oh yeah, the, I would love to get the rice finger eye. Those are those I are know. fucking gorgeous. I'm raising a male now. We got the that's female, awesome. Lone female right now, yeah. I love those things. I see them available all the time. They're just so expensive, and I hate. Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know if I, if I. I don't know. I, I'm always hesitating to just to to jump into a new project. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're probably my favorite. The tree monitors. Mm -hmm. They're just. They're, they're, they seem to be more bold and inquisitive than the, the other ones do. Um, our females, you know, talk about socializing. You know, you put your arm in there, she'll crawl out on you. And uh, the the male is a really small baby. Um, yeah. It's always out and, like, eat off my hands and stuff like that. So, yeah, they just seem to be, you know, more bold. Well, how did, how did y'all socialize uh, Kilo? The, the, isn't that the friendly croc monitor y'all yeah. have? Got lucky. Was she just was she was just friendly when you got her? Or? Yeah, she was super friendly when we first got her. But Forrest just played with her every time he was around, and we just take her awesome. out constantly. And um, I remember when he was in Indonesia, and I had to like make into her cage, and I was just terrified. And she's just a tiny <laughs> little baby, and I'm like, all right, don't be a pussy, just grab her. Just go in there, you're fine. Just do what Forrest been doing. Like she's all hissy, you know, and like flicking her tail and getting all mean. And I'm like, she's gonna, she's gonna be fine. And I did it, and I was shaking, and it was just like terrifying. But um, over time, like we just every day, it seemed like we open it and talk to her, and it, she'll come up to us, and we'll just put her our her hand under her chin and um, let her smell us. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for the freaking talons on those things like i'd let her come out more like i usually try to yeah they tear you i have scars like, i have scars yeah. on my arm from and them. she always wants to get on my head so it's just like your face you're just worried about <laughs> yeah. an eye i remember when she was real little she did that and i had this scratch just get down the side of my face Ooh. from her, from her so nail savage. but and then we have another one that's uh, still pretty small and we just try to do the same thing like just take her out as much as possible and then um the the third one i think is the male um yeah he's he's an asshole yeah. <laughs> yeah. baby kush yeah baby we kush, lost man. that one we didn't spend enough time good call the name <laughs> yeah, well I it was it. supposed to be his monitor to train and work with and socialize and he also steven failed it that's what steven happened failed yeah. <laughs> So, I totally had an hour a day to it, do that. It's actually supposed to go up to the reptarium and, mm -hmm. and live there for a while. And Brian, well, that's cool. Brian will take me down. Um, I got to go check out that place. I, I, I started watching some of his videos and yeah. I saw some of the, the reptarium. It looks awesome. It Legendary. Yeah. It's yeah. fucking yeah. sick. Coolest, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen with any kind of reptile keeping. It smokes It smoked the San Diego Zoo deck. I mean, in my opinion. I mean, that's yeah, it's my open opinion. now, too, I guess. Um, they they can have 10 people in there at a time. So. Oh, really? Like, yeah, he's selling spots throughout the day, each hour. It's just like. When I first heard he was doing that, I was I was actually went up to that uh, Universal Rock place because we were trying to get quotes and stuff for building the, the things we wanted. And uh, he was like, oh, uh, we got to do something like Brian Barczyk has. has. And I was like, what? I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't pay attention or nothing. You know, I, I don't, I always thought he was a ball python guy. I don't know. I never, <laughs> I didn't know he was building a zoo or anything. And I don't get on YouTube a whole lot. And then that, you know, after I left the Universal Rock place, I started watching his video. And I think I spent two weeks where I was watching videos every day. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. It was yeah. really, really cool. It'd be awesome if more places like that popped up because, you know, it's that like, Everyone wants to go to the zoo to see animals, but like that real education comes when they're yeah in your hands exactly when you're interacting with yeah. the animals, and that's what like, I want to do. Yeah, the zoo's not going to have a more free tech. Here's you know like there's, exactly. there's, there's, there's like there's conservation. Yeah. Carl is and I talk to you about like, Carl, he's, oh, he's, here he is. Fuck but, up. Like, like but then, <laughs> but when you go to a place like that, it's you know this ten foot cow retake that someone puts around your neck is going to excite a kid more than like. I'm going to talk to you about the Eastern coach whip and their native <laughs> habitats and their brumation patterns. Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You want to get them excited about the animals yeah. for they sure. That's birthday parties an awesome place. and all kinds of like, they have like a, a thing where you put your feet in and the fish like eat the skin off your feet oh, yeah. and like a massage area yeah. where they put like good teeth on you and let them. No, sure. That's awesome. Like, you watch the videos and there's a lot of young kids. It's their first mm -hmm. 
time holding a snake. Like, yeah. Yeah. they go to a zoo, they're not going to get to do that. It's like, oh, I see it, but yeah. you go to go yeah, interacting definitely hold it's it towards like, that. Get over fears yeah. or like you know pursue a passion for the first time. And it's like a destination for a lot of people too, because yeah, he has travel from. Yeah. He's got tens yeah. of thousands of people who oh, are watching his videos every single day. Mm-hmm. You know. I, I know when Popular I was a kid, I wanted to go to his his breeding facility and like this is a place you can actually go. You know, imagine like a nine year old watching this. You know, that's like what they want to do for their birthday is take a trip to the reptarium. You know? Yeah. There was this there was this college kid who flew from France the same time I was there, and he flew from France, limited money, flew from France, and that's when all the COVID shit went down and they shut down international fucking. <laughs> So he couldn't he couldn't get back home and he had like literally limited like he, his money was spaced out perfectly so he could go and come back and just be done. Jeez. I don't even know what I hope that kid's okay. I yeah. talked to him for like I, I don't, I don't consider school. talking, but I hope he's okay. Yeah, I'm a boat ride home. <laughs> right, swim. Shit. Here, sit here. Dude, but I'll I'll tell you what, the coolest thing about fucking the reptarium. Is if you go next door to the office, BHB, that's when it really hits you that you're at Brian's place because right there is where he films all his videos. Like that's where really like you get the feel of like Brian's fucking place is when you go over to the yeah. BHB side of things. Uh, I didn't get the full because like dude, I was fucking on fumes when I was visiting his spot, so I didn't get to like really go like to get the whole fucking see BHB it's, breeding. It's right beside the, the where his breeding place is. Yeah, where all his fucking stack of fucking, you know, his uh, where where yeah. everything, you know what I mean? Everything that yeah. you vlog basically the Yeah, the, I used to watch it on that Snake Bites TV that I guess it's not yeah. a thing anymore, but I remember when I was a kid it was that when was I watched started, it. And yeah. I, I loved that shit back then when I was first getting into reptiles. That was uh, I couldn't I, I thought that's what that guy was telling me about with his his zoo thing. So I was searching Snake Bites and all I could find was Brian's. It said Brian Barcheck or something. The personal channel, I guess. I guess they took the other one down or something. Yeah. Yeah. He just had Brian Barcheck. His blog. Yeah. yeah. To grab attention. But for TikTok, they're great. Oh yeah, those are the viral. He's killing it TikTok. His TikTok yeah. is better than don't Instagram. Put it on, don't put it on YouTube. You know that's like compromising your morals and stuff. But TikTok it all day. Yeah, you know? my my <laughs> TikTok, TikTok has all day. <laughs> TikTok was so pointless. I had to delete TikTok because I'd spend anything. all day looking at it, you know. <laughs> you can, yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so uh Blake, um the you got white lips or anything like that? I mean, I saw you have a white lip on your Instagram. So I mean, is there any uh, white I have I, I, I used to have a, a a few. Uh I had a big pair of them, and that was I lost the male and I ended up uh getting rid of the female. And then uh, I've gotten a few in recently that I've just been, you know, I, I, I've, I've been getting from friends that import and then I, I kind of get them healthy and then I sell them, make a little bit of money. Uh, but I, I, I'm not really keeping any. I'd like to get some Southern, so I would love to have some Southern white lips. Yeah. Because, Steven, you have a pair or just a female? I can't remember. A pair. <sighs> Fire. Mm-hmm. And you have a pair, do you have a pair or trio of white lips? I can't remember that. The of northerns? Yes. I got I got a pair of both northerns and southerns. Nice. That's awesome. You need to you need to breed those, man. You tried you need some baby southerns. Dude, I tried. Oh well the, the southerns, you know, I don't know. They're they're small. Like they're they're basically like of age, but there was a weird time when like they weren't feeding. They're just they're they're small. I I don't know. Like yeah. uh, I have to hmm. talk to like Ryan Young or someone who's actually done it, you know, get their opinion on age versus size with those. But they're, they're a lot smaller than my northerns are. Um, hmm. And my northerns aren't like ridiculously big for northerns either. So try breeding them. I thought the it's, southerns, it's I was under the impression that the southerns were bigger. Well, right. That, yeah, they are. They yeah, that's why like, you know, I'm worried about trying to breed mine right now because yeah. the northerns are of adult size. And if the southerns are even smaller than that, like, am I just, you know, am I yeah. going too soon? Is basically the. You know, yeah. Thing, but. I, can't re- I can't remember i just because i thought for some reason you guys are probably right but i thought it was the other way around because looking at brian's fucking snakes that he posted it looks like the block like the southern smaller i'm gonna f- i'm gonna look at it right now just to make sure i just feel like i've seen huge southerns before. yeah i've seen like like seven eight foot southerns but yeah, the yeah. Old, you know yeah. six foot's a big one i think that's yeah. pretty, that thing looks pretty girthy 
she said. Those are expensive now. That's why I haven't got any. And then when they yeah. when they come in, they're gone instantly. I think I Dan imports them every once in a while. I got so lucky because they were coming like of course you did. every now and then. Yeah, I know, right? And like <laughs> I bought I bought mine at Tinley, seven hundred for a pair. And no like, shit. The, yeah, sick bastard. For the next month. They were like they were available, but more expensive, and then nothing. And then a year later, it's yeah. like fifteen hundred for an individual. I'm like, yeah, dumb shit. All right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got lucky. What else, you, what else did you you scored heavy on a scrub like that too? What yeah, you, a Malukin at Arlington. It was a it was a baby. It looked like a three fifty like, for Malukin. Yeah, three fifty for a Malukin thing. Uh, I had a friend tell me that it was a Wamina after I, I bought it, and I was all bummed. I'm like, yeah, kind of, you know, that's what they that's what they're worth. And then it shed, and I'm like. That's gold. That's purple. I was right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, let's, on the Instagram. let's make it. Let's make. Let's make these idiots think that they paid like fucking. You know, God knows how much for this snake. Because I mean, technically, what would that snake be worth, Stephen? Um, the market at the time, it wasn't. It was in bad shape, but like, probably could have got nine hundred for it. Um, it's not that bad. And then the next was it like a that, year or so ago. Two years pay. ago, it was like uh, yeah, it was like a year and a half ago. And like the next ones that, yeah. that Joe Zwitowski had available were like you know a year plus a step, you know bigger animals. He had them at like thirteen fifty. Um, well, that was like I think I got one. one from him a couple of years ago. I think I, I paid him eight or nine hundred dollars for one, and that's the same time I got that uh, that uh, the Hamahara scrub from him. Yeah. And I, the 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 class though didn't didn't make it sadly it didn't last very long but That's too bad. I've I've had a few of those come in and I uh, hadn't been able to keep them alive I keep getting imports and they they, they suck sometimes yeah right what's the uh, picture of this uh real of quick, this baby with, Malukin with imports Blake what's I don't want you to kind of describe your worst experience with an import, but like what's one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn with an import? Uh, pay attention to what, what the fuck they have on them when they come in. I've, I've thrown snakes into racks, just, you know, trying to rush, you know, I, I work and then I do this too. I got a lot of animals and it's, it's, I'm constantly going and going and going and I'm doing it by myself. And yeah. so it's, it's, I get, you know, in over my head sometimes and I, I've grabbed snakes and just thrown them into racks and they'll have ticks on them or, you know, fresh imported stuff. And you can't do that because <laughs> you'll, you'll spread all kinds of bugs and things that you don't want. And I'll notice the next day, Oh shit, this has ticks all over it or, or whatever. You know, I just got, uh, some, some, uh, white lips a few weeks ago that, you know, I noticed there were some, uh, some ticks on those. And so I gotta, you know, keep those for a while and make sure there's no bugs on them and make sure there's, they're eating good and all this other stuff before I can do anything with them, you know. And yeah. Don't want to sell anything that has anything like that for sure. Yeah. Here's that snake. Can... Can't closer. Well, I'm trying to like not get the reflection in it. Uh, no, that's the thing. If you go closer, you won't see the reflection. There we go, pal. Focus. Yeah. There so we that's go. that at the show. That's Maybe. what you bought at the show. Yeah. And baby Malukins are supposed to be red. So you're like, that's not a Malukin. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, meaning that's not the uh, um, well, but like what I saw is like that the pattern on the on the uh, the tail, like it's a very like Malukin like pattern on that tail, and it's a little bit. Damn, like, you would really have to know Malukins to know that though, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought it was either if I had saw then, that for sure. Here, let me show you a picture I took last week. Well deserved. Um, well deserved. I'm just. I don't think I would have shot a cool that. snake. You know, this thing's just freaking. I probably wouldn't have bought it if it was me, and then you probably said and it was probably. Yeah, look yeah, at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That snake looks fucking that gorgeous. Snake, that snake looked crusty at the show. Oh yeah, it looked it looked terrible. I mean the, the first shed like its skin ripped open and then, then it got covered in blisters and like it, you know oh, shit. it was a I was like, oh shit, well I'm not 350 and then and it look. just it just kind of shed it out and I make sure it stayed drier, you know, I didn't want to cause that I that, I feel like that happens when they get overhydrated or just like too expensive. The blisters, to yeah. Yeah. Um, I, just, I just kept it dry and clean, and it shed out a few times. And it it was eating from the from the start. It, it took a pinky the day I got it, so you know that's good. It was at least it was eating. So yeah, I went and then turned around, and now it's doing freaking great, eating like rat pups now almost. Stephen rolls the dice, and you know what I mean. Gets fucking whatever, whatever the fuck he gets. Luck yeah. every every time. Yeah, but okay. no, we I, Steve, Stephen's taking some blows to the fucking nads too. Yeah, I lost three Beox scrubs. 
got right. three losses. Like, you know, Nobody, God, that, that was tough. Not every animal's perfect. No. Well, I mean, not, scrubs I mean, are hard. I hear a lot of a lot of the import scrubs people have trouble with, and you you don't think because nobody's out talking. Oh, I bought you know ten of these and eight died, but you know I've you know yeah. I had I had a group of the Arfac or Arfac or however you say yeah. it scrub the Barnex that locality, and I mean they're gorgeous, and I bought uh I think one point three of mm-hmm. them, and they were fresh imports and everything, and uh. Uh, I only have that one male left. You know, I lost all three of the females. And then a friend of mine, he had a few of them. And I talked to him the other day, and he said he only has, you know, one female of the group he bought that, that survived, you know. And it's just, yeah. I think the import scrubs don't do as well as a, yeah, you know, the, right off the bat for the sure. bigger ones, like, you know, a captive hatch or even wild caught babies for the most part, I feel like established well. But yeah, I've had some big ones that, you know, you can just tell from the jump, like, eh, this yeah, not gonna work. Um, yeah, definitely. Which is unfortunate. So, especially with like the rare localities, you know, you just take what you can get, and sometimes that's a, you know, like those, like two of the Biox scrubs were adults or you know sub adults, and they just yeah. never ate. Um, I yeah, baby. it sucks. I, I had a captive hatch or whatever, maybe wild caught young male thing was doing great, and then like within a week, it's just like, nope. So. I don't know. That was a huge blow. Like the bigger ones, I kind of saw coming and was pissed off with the, the small one. That was one of the hardest losses I've. Ever yeah. Had. And that thing really, that was really disappointing. So. Part that's of the game. Make, that's what makes you. Yeah, more, definitely. If it gets you down, then you're not really uh, cut out for it or haven't experienced it enough. So. Yeah. Exactly. Unfortunately. From what I from what I've experienced, with every loss comes a major gain if your mind's in the right place. You'll make yeah. it up. You'll make it up somehow. Right, it's a learning experience, you know. You always you learn from every everything that happens. It's the fighter within sure. you. Man. If you don't fucking throw in the towel, you're gonna really do something that's gonna make you thank yourself for staying and sticking in this shit. Yeah, period. Absolutely, motherfuckers who want like whoever's on like on a time frame, or they expect things at a certain time, or they want things done at a certain time, and they like make it that they're they're, they're fucking themselves. It's not, it doesn't work like that. No, mm-hmm. it happens when it happens. Exactly. And sometimes it does work out, you know. Like sometimes you do get lucky and it work out. Like I got really lucky with those barnecks. Like you know, I didn't even know that male was a male until about a week out of breeding them. Sometimes <laughs> stuff just goes your way. Like you know, I didn't even know it was a scrub. I thought it was a big. Yeah, thing. <laughs> like yeah, this is like a boa or something. It's like I thought, it was, I thought it was a cool milk snake. <laughs> There's a guy I know, uh, a friend of mine. He he paired up his Indian python, or I think it was. Yeah, I think it was his Indian pythons last year, and that's a that's a big deal. You know, the Indian pythons are, are not very common, and uh, he paired them up, and the male ended up laying the eggs. He had them backwards the entire time he owned them. I mean, hey, <laughs> as long as one's a male and one's a female, it really doesn't matter which one's which. It worked out, but that's he had it backwards the entire time. <laughs> wow, that's funny. I think I might have that with my white lips. I have a theory that I think my, I think they're switched. Yeah. As long as long as, as long as they're not the same, you're good. Yeah. No, if they were the same, they would be dead by now. So right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah, would terrible would have happened by now. If they I would have been a thump and then, you know. Yep. They chill. In there, fucking rapping shit. It's no joke. Mm. Huh. Um, as far as your rodents go, are you like do you? How do you frozen thaw? Do you feed them all live? How's that fucking work for you? I mean, you have probably a big collection, right? So, with your as far as your snakes go, so how do you feed? Oh, uh, I do. I do frozen thaw. I actually just got a, a pretty decent sized shipment from from Cold Blooded Cafe. You don't it's the say best quality shit, man. <laughs> you don't say. How is that acting? It's like this was all <laughs> planned. <laughs> it really wasn't though. It just comes. Out- <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean it. It, when you're the best, you're the best. But continue, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I get rats from different people, though. You know, there's uh, uh, Bart Stone Street. He lives in Houston. Yeah. He's pretty close to me. I've traded him animals for rodents, you know, and, and he's got a pretty big facility. And he also buys stuff from, from y'all, I think, and yeah. uh, to keep up with what he – oh, uh, <laughs> But uh, – <laughs> uh, Bart's uh, awesome. Anyway. Bart. 
but I get I, I get stuff from Bart sometimes. I've traded animals to him, and I like yeah. I, I like to trade animals and get feeders. That that helps me out a lot because yeah. spending money on feeders just sucks. feel better about it's it. It's so know? expensive. Yeah, that's how I got the blood python. The what? Our, the blood python we have that was all rodent trained. And, and yeah, oh, all that really big one. Yeah. What a score! Are you are you ever gonna breed that fucking beautiful creature or no? If there's a male that looks just like her, because her, her red is on pops. You need one of those cherry bomb fucking. Uh, I had one and oh, I got rid normal, of it. man. Huh? Like, like just breed a, like a really nice normal red blood to it. You know, not is she a normal or is she a T positive? Yeah, she's just a normal red blood. Really red hot. Looks hot insane. One. She's a hot tamale. If there's, if there's a male out Garrett, there, looks right? that nice. Yeah. From Harlow. Yeah, like his, his pet. And it's, she's, Who did Garrett know, get that from? I don't know. But she's like six feet long and, you know, maybe feed her like a enormous. colossal rat like every other month. Like she's a lean snake. You know, she's not fat by any any means. So. She eats every awesome. other month? I mean, like if I just forget to feed her and I'm like, I, think, I don't think I've done it for a while. And then she eats and I'm like, okay, I'm forgetting about you for a bit, you know. Yeah, there's no reason that snake needs to eat that much. Yeah, you're just short yeah. of life if you overfeed it. So. A lot, of, a lot of snakes don't need to eat as much as as they are fed for sure. No. For sure, people feed the shit out of their snakes sometimes. I love for getting real. those emails where they're like, "I have to feed on Saturday. I don't know if this is gonna come in or not. Where's yeah. my rotus? I ordered, I ordered on Thursday evening and it's Saturday morning and I don't have my rotus. What's out? happening? I didn't, get a, I didn't get a follow-up receipt. <laughs> no, they, they even did. It's just like they didn't read our shipping page where it's like, we ship on Monday and Tuesday because oh, dry ice is a thing. So like, the tracking number for the tracking number. <laughs> it's like, I order Saturday morning. It's Sunday morning. Why are my rodents here? It's like, oh dude, that's what, I give it to you guys. You guys, It's so much patience, and especially like in a, you know, being in a, working for the man, like in a corporation, customer service is like, it's hard, but it's not as hard doing it when you're dealing with fucking people in this hobby, bro. Like, yeah. you know, like it's nuts. Like the, the demand, like the entitlement, the fucking like, you know what I mean? It, it's, and then especially the ones that have the balls to want your time and never even bought anything from you, but they expect you to fucking answer them or they expect you to like, mm. I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's, we had a, gr a great customer recently who, uh, you know, she, damn near like microwave the rodents like I, I think she she heated them up so fast that like they they burst open like it happens when something's so cold and then all of a sudden it's so hot and she put it on her instagram calling us out you know oh, look how terrible they they are they're rodents they're they're packed in so tightly in the bag if they burst open it's like dude what? and she has a nerve to email and like ask for like a oh, yeah, refund that's my, or something that's my other favorite thing is when they hit me up on like six different platforms and the email and i'm just like i feel like i might have already dealt with this one but i don't know because you're messaging me and emailing yeah. me and dming me like everywhere possible it's like just send the one email to the one customer service and i'll get it like and then they get mad because I won't answer them on a Saturday or Sunday. It's like my day off, kind of. <laughs> With all that said, lots of very, very great customers. We very much appreciate Love seeing the story posts. Yeah. <laughs> with with the negatives, there are many, many more positives that outweigh. That's about your customers. Eh? So <laughs> you know, I mean, wild, that's like my, in my, general, it's pretty. That's like pretty my great. main job is you customer want, service, and uh, so it gets hard sometimes. Do you want to know something wild? Is there was somebody, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, we're not we're not throwing any names under the fucking under the damn semis here, but um, there was there was somebody who has a real, there was yeah yeah definitely fucking definitely we could say it's one of these right here. So <laughs> <laughs> there, there was somebody there was somebody who has like a collection that's well under twenty. Let's just put it that way, and they put a fucking they put a, a YouTube video on like why you should not ever go frozen thought like you know frozen thought is oh you know takes too much time and all this other shit right um like you know as far as like thawing out and how like if you thaw them out sometimes they smell bad i'm like well that's okay where the fuck are you getting your rat from then right <laughs> i've <laughs> never had like dead rodents it's like what do you want them to smell like flowers another argument was like they, he said that this person said that uh you know, once you unthaw a rat, the snake doesn't take the rat. You can't refreeze it again. That's fucking bullshit. I, I, there's a rule of two on that, from what That's I experienced. Called B grade. Uh, what'd you say? <laughs> say that one more time. You can't just say That's it. That's called B grade. B grade, right? It still works though. It's like fucking. Actually, technically, depends on the snake. Spaghetti always tastes better two, three days later. I mean, true. You're right. 
That's the truth. Bro. It might be better. <laughs> exactly. Please sit down, dude. Uh, but anyways, it's uh, it it was just crazy how like it was so against so many things against feeding frozen thaw, which actually, if you do things the correct way, like there's an easier way to unfree to to unfroze your your rats. You know what I mean? Uh, I've never had any issues the way I do it. Would you say? Lukewarm tap water or air. I don't like doing the soggy warm shit warm. thing. I don't really do that. I don't fucking. If, if you thaw them out in water, I wouldn't refreeze them. They, 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 I think they rot faster when you thaw them out in water. I don't know. I, I like to put them out overnight and then the next day I feed. 24 yeah. hours, put them out 24 hours, their fur's back. And then I, and then sometimes if it's really like if they're really that frozen and shit, I'll put them on a heat pad for 30 minutes and flip them over every 15 minutes. And then that's really like. That's so a little anything. bit of salt on it too. Yeah, you know? that, that, honestly, fucking inc that increases the heat, <laughs> right? So, either way, I'm just saying there. You know, why, 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 why do, why create more work? Why do something harder when you could be smarter? I guess I don't know, right? Um, but all I'm saying is, if you know, depending on your situation, for one thing, if you want to like, to, if you can't afford a crazy fucking vet bill and you want to take a fucking a live rat bat bite to your snake that you didn't catch, because I went through that and that was fucking miserable. That was terrible. My snake got an infection and fucking shit bubbled up all from a snake bite. So, um, I don't know. I'm just saying it's there's a lot of pros and cons on both. I think, but at the end of the day, Cold Blood Cafe is the best company. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I agree. I agree. I don't know what's going with that, but uh, no, that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I just had to ask. Uh, with your, with your diets for your monitors, are, are they primarily just rodents, or do you, are you feed them chicks every now and then, or how's that work? Uh, with the monitors, they eat damn near anything, really. Uh, it, it really depends on, on what, uh, what I'm getting. I, I like to not feed them rodents all the time because that's a lot of fat. I want them to be healthier. I do keep a lot of my lizards outside, so they're they're going to be healthier. They're getting a lot more heat, a lot more sun, a lot more exercise than a lot of people who keep them inside. But uh, I still don't like to feed them overly fat items. I do feed a lot of rats, uh, but I, I like to do chicken, quail. Uh, I also use the Missouri croc diet. I, I actually uh, I had a, a – a monitor keeper, an older monitor keeper, been doing it a long time. Uh, Rob Faust uh, from down here in Texas, and he he breeds uh, or he used to breed ornate monitors. And so I've, you know, past couple of years since you know I met him for the first time, I've, I've tried to pick his brain on Niles and and ornates because ornates are one of my favorite monitors. And he's the one who told me about the Missouri Croc diet. And he basically you crush it up into a powder and mix it in with some ground chicken, and uh, you make little meatballs. And, uh, you know, the chickens just to hold it all together. You can get it wet and kind of make balls, but it'll, it'll fall apart when they grab it. But you mix it up with some chicken, some ground chicken, make these little meatballs. And it's a, it's a complete diet for them, you know, it has all the things they need. And I feed a lot of that, too. If you're prepping meals like that for your animal, it's all love, man. You're really passionate for that animal. You're, you're, going, you're yeah. going far and beyond, and you're doing the most because that's at the end of the day, man. I remember I, I, I had pit bulls, right? And I was trying to be all about this raw diet. Oh, they're going to eat raw meat all the time. Bro, when I found <laughs> out the fucking work that was, measuring fucking meat and like, you know, just like, all right, I'm cool. Like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting this once a week, motherfucker. Like, you know, you're and once a week. And, uh, and, and, you know, he's a beautiful dog. You know, my both my dogs are beautiful and they're healthy. And uh, But, you know, it's cool that you do that because uh, yeah, doing the most for it, you know? Yeah, they get a lot of variety. You know, I've had people for a while. I had a lot of they, they ate a lot of rats because I had a guy, a local guy who who breeds rodents. His freezer went out, and he had a lot of you know rodents that were thawed out and nasty. You know, you can't sell something that there's blood all in the bag or whatever. But I refroze them. You know, they they weren't you know too far gone. And monitors don't give a shit. They'll eat that. They'll eat those rats. And I took them from him. I gave. I think I gave him a ball python that I'd gotten in a trade or something. Uh, some highway or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't know the value of ball pythons, but his wife wanted it, and I gave it to him because he gave me all these rats. And uh, and I mean, those lizards are really good for a couple months. Nice. Sweet. Wait. So you have no idea? Do you recall the the markings or the lookings of it this was, ball python? It was, it was it was a highway, something something highway. I don't know. Maybe just a highway. It was white with like 
stripe down its back. Like maybe a highway. pastel highway. Pastel. Maybe pastel. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't care. Ball python. Ball python. <laughs> Damn! I traded, I, traded a, I traded a retic for like ten ball pythons that I knew nothing about, and I I couldn't sell them, and so I I pretty much gave them all away. It was it was a bad trade. <laughs> Crazy man, coming from a you know, and, and like honestly, look, I uh, I I, I kind of like you know, especially hanging out with Steven, you know, more often. It's like I, I I'm more like eh, ball python, right? But. <laughs> If in the reality, man, like that's what started it for me. That was my fucking foundation. That's like everything. Really? So what is it? What is so what is your love for the ball pythons? Is it super minimal? Is it just like is there any kind of love for a ball python anymore? Or like what what's what makes you just say fuck? I want no interest with a ball python. I don't want to breed them. I don't even, like what is that? I don't even want to look this up. Here, have this I've, for some rats. Like what what makes you do that? Just curious. I've tried, I've tried several times, you know, with me. I uh I do like money and I see that there's a lot of fucking money in ball pythons, but it's, it's, I guess, I guess it's not all about that. Cause every time I've tried to get them, I, I'll buy a group and I just have no interest in it. I, they're, they're, I want to, I want to see my snakes and they do better in tubs, you know, and that's the same with the, the blood pythons and stuff. I got, I got heavy into blood pythons one year and I bought, you know, I spent, ten fifteen thousand dollars on, on blood pythons. And then the next year got rid of all of them. Cause I, I bred some and I just had no interest in them. And the same way with the ball pythons, I, I try to get them, I try to work with them and you know, they hide the whole time and they don't do much. And I, I don't know. I just, I, it's not my thing. I like to look at my snakes and I like to watch them do things. And I don't like a snake that just hides all day. Well respected. I can, I could, uh, I could feel those mm -hmm. vibes for sure. Um, I just, me personally, cause I've only been like breeding for like not, not even a year or so. I just think it's cool to breed something. It's cool to see yeah. it's cool to see something come out of an egg, right? Um, yeah. So I don't know. I guess uh, I, I guess never I, even got that far with ball pythons. I'd buy them, and then it'd be like a month, and I'd be like, "Nah, this ain't my thing." <laughs> and I've done that three or four times. I've thought I'm gonna do ball pythons. I'm gonna do it, and I just I can't I can't get myself into them. I don't know. Yeah. That's because like, if you just want to make an impact nowadays in the ball python game, man. Whew. You're gonna be paying some fucking some good moolah, man. And even if you do that, it's still not even good enough for you to actually get like the fucking attention. Like there's people like out there that I see that have like 180 followers and they're producing crazy shit. And it's like, what's like is that nobody and that's a, probably another part of it too, is is there's so much out there and so many people that are already big into it. I don't, I, I, there's no way I'm going to catch up and learn all the, all the morphs and stuff. 100%. And then I don't have any name in ball pythons and, you know, I, I, I tried to sell fucking normal pastels and shit like that. And people wouldn't buy them from me because, you know, this is a retake table or whatever, you know, they, you don't know shit about ball python, but Food? It, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> Are you, you feed live, huh? Cool. <laughs> Listen, man, we we're just we're just shying of the two hours, man. You got any wrap up questions for our, for a guy right here, Blake, uh, Des, Coach? Uh, what's like a species or a couple that are you know next on your list of uh, ones you want to work with? Uh, I really, really want to get some Bolins pythons. Uh, yeah. That was that was what I was supposed to buy last year. I saved up some money for them. I was like, I'm gonna get you know a small group of them. I wanted five. And uh, I knew, you know, I, I know a lot of people that, that import them and I could buy direct from wholesalers and shit like that and get a really good deal. And then those those lace monitors became available and I spent all the money I had on those and uh, which which was worth it. I mean, I have I, I kept in a, a pair and I sold one of them. I bought three and I sold one and I, I kept what, what ended up being a pair. I got lucky and they're huge now. And. They're 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 worth it, and I hope I hope soon this year maybe I'll be able to get my bow ones. That's something I've always wanted. Yeah. Fingers crossed on After that. Rust. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Desi, Desi. Awesome. Um, what do you have? Like, uh, who is your big mentor coming up? Uh, I don't know. Everybody, you know, oh, I, I've. Yeah. It's just I, I think there's so many people that in every single community because it's and it's it's awesome seeing people like I'll, I'll give you an example. There's uh, when I was a kid going to the, the shows in Texas, you know, I'd see uh, Jason Reed and James Mitchell. Uh, they were huge retic breeders and they, you know, they 
real uh, made a lot of stuff, and and I looked up to those guys. And then now I'll be vending a show, and James Mitchell will come up wearing my shirt, and you know, it's it's the coolest shit ever. You know, I'm friends with these people that I, I saw growing up, and it's I mean it's it's awesome stuff. There's there's so many people I, I couldn't even name them all. It's just everybody I you know I see a lot of people. I looked up to Steven since I found his Instagram. I mean, he's <laughs> all are, uh, all are amazing stuff, you know. I tried telling that to Steven. He just like pretends I don't even say it. He's like, never, <laughs> never give me props. I'm like, what? Yeah, Steven used to look up to me. And now he tried to tell me what to do. <laughs> <That's some bullshit. laughs> That's Steve. Yeah, Fuck. Not sure. No. Well, Blake, the, the man. Look up to part, yeah, not the tell her what to do part. Oh, 100%. Thank uh, <laughs> you. It's been a real honor, bro. This, is a, this has been That's a really, really cool uh, two hours getting to know you, talking to you, uh, knowing, you know, hearing what your goals are, what your plans are for the near future. Um, you're definitely uh, cool with you. I definitely want to stop by your spot when I'm in Texas. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, definitely. Seems like you got a lot of cool shit going on, man. And uh, you, you're, you know, you're in the right place from what I can tell. Uh, your wife is super legit just by hearing that story for her <laughs> to get that snake. For something, you know, something legendary, you know, and choice. Yeah. For sure. uh, but yeah, man, um, people on Instagram, right? I mean, your your page, right? As far as Instagram, if you're selling stuff, you post it majority on your, your Instagram page, your Facebook page. You have a website. Oh, I, I do have a website. Uh, I, I used to have a Facebook page, but Facebook keeps deleting it. So now I kind of. Facebook. Just do now. I just kind of I sell some on my my personal page, and then Instagram here and there. I don't have. I think I have like a hundred followers on Instagram. I, I don't know how people get followers. I think I have cool stuff, but we'll get you there, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We'll put, <laughs> and, we'll put you on and then my my website is just blakewilsonreptiles.com, and I post. I try to keep it updated, but right now it's it's not. You know, there's stuff on there that's sold, or that you know, there's more stuff that I have now that I haven't put up there yet. It's hard to keep up with all that stuff. I need, yeah. I need employees. <laughs> Girls, I mean, I hear you on that. But day by day, man, you'll get there. Um, we'll definitely uh, make sure Steven and Desiree handle the whole swipe up thing. They got that cool feature where you swipe up and uh, people will just look at your page and follow you. So um, okay. we'll do that awesome. for you. Just because uh, I feel like you are somebody that people need to see what you got. Some people yeah. need to see the, the animals you're working with. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I feel like this podcast was uh, real informative. You really gave us some good heat about what's uh, what you got planned and what you have in store. And uh, yeah, man, looking forward to it, Blake. Yeah, I appreciate it. Cool, man. You have a wonderful night. Uh, what well, you're in Texas, so it's what time is it over there? Four thirty. Five o'clock. Yeah, you enjoy your evening, bro. We'll talk to you soon. And. Uh, Blake Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later, Blake. All right. Later. Bye. Fucking Blake Wilson. Guy was fucking sick. Yeah. I didn't know I, I, I didn't know he's never been on a podcast before. That's major. Well, you're here first, folks. Now he is. Really, really cool he's shit. Insane shit. And the diversity of his collection is ridiculous, too. And it's not just like this here and there. Like, his adults, like, he's breeding these things. So. Dude. And he has good experience with, you know, his monitors and shit, like, which is, uh, I don't know, like, you know, obviously after hearing him wanting to, you know, make it like an attraction or like he wants to do private, like, you know, tours and shit, dude's on a mission, obviously. I wonder what kind of mammals he's going to get. I'm sure he'll get something sick. Um, it's Texas, man. It's wild, though. I want to go to Texas. I'm just, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with my whole weed situation because I'm like, you can't take weed to Texas. It's will fuck you up. I ain't going to jail in Texas, bro. You know what I mean? Can I ask around Can you not do it for like a week? Or... We'll talk after this. That's right. I'm just kidding. No, I could. I mean, it's, just, it's more of a mental thing. And I am mental, so. But, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, going to an Arlington show and really seeing fucking all these cool Texans at this show, man. It seems like Arlington's like the hub. Where all every sick breeder in Texas come together, right? I mean, you guys tell me, you guys yeah. been there, so you fucking yeah, uh, the community vibe at Arlington is just it's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not as big as Pomona or Tinley, but like just it's it's quality over quantity at that show. Yeah, you know, hanging out on Saturday Close night friend. with all the guys, like yeah. it's awesome. You know, it, it's it's something I look forward to every year. I just know I'm about to gain a lot of weight because I fucking love barbecue. You feel me? I eat barbecue like a motherfucker. Fucking uh, when yeah. when Forrest and I were there with our friend Nick Gordon from Toledo Zoo, we went to this place. Um, 
It's just like meat bar thing. Like, oh. you know, you got like pounds of fucking meat cut right off the bone, like in front of you, all fucking barbecued up and shit, fucking and spent a lot of money. Like, it was so good. Oh my god, it was fucking chill. incredible. Like beef chill. ribs and shit. And oh, chill. chill. Yeah, I'm so hungry. I'm I'm invited to Memorial. Oh God! Oh, mashed potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> I feel like I'm shaky. Hey. Uh, oh my God, Carl! Please go away. God, Carl showed up for a split second, you know, and during the fucking. Oh God, here he you is. Guys again. didn't have enough conservation content. Oh my God! Can you sign here, please? You're talking about captive breeding. Ugh. Oh my God. Talk about assurance colonies and. Hey, Carl, real quick. Did you happen yeah. to see Tabitha's, uh, the pet tuber's friend who uh, said spraying Lysol in a, in a, you know, in a ball python's mouth is what Kate takes to, I mean, what, what is your thoughts on that, Carl? I mean. Well, I think in the first place, why are you even keeping a ball python? They're an African species. <laughs> is Africa? Tell me. <laughs> oh, my God. So it's would not you, the Lysol. Would you spray Lysol on an animal in the wild? I mean, where where does Lysol naturally occur? COVID situations. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, are we done? Why I, I prefer a hands-off approach to captive propagation, as I like to say it, for conservation purposes only, in association with AZA zoos and the SSP, the Species Survival Plan. God damn it, Carl! Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Carl, Carl, you, Carl, you know Carl, I'm right. You just never. That's why you're so upset. You practice this in the mirror, Carl, every morning. You're nuts. What do you mean practice? This is who I am. I, I live it. it. <laughs> <I'm> conservation, Carl. <laughs> I can't wait to Nick fucking watches this. Oh my god! Hey, my, my my good friend Nick Gordon at the Toledo <laughs> Zoo. He he knows the mission. Jesus. In a way, he is also conservation carl oh my god we god. have great we have great talks about native ohio reptiles he's not gonna stop you're gonna need to cut him off yeah i mean i can hey, hear hey, him but carl carl just showed up you guys have been talking for two hours carl's been waiting oh fuck i don't i got a i got a memorial party to get to so um carl, is it more I, important I, than conserving yeah, endangered and threatened species in the wild 100 percent. what's yeah. more important than that um it's that it's the barbecue? that's barbecue you're Jesus at it right no i'm stop. a vegan <laughs> he won't stop i'm a cow farming is the ultimate cause <laughs> oh of god glow. here's the deal guys we are going to uh be live this hey, coming tell friday us. what the f how do you do that carl don't censor Damn it, Carl keeps unmuting himself. Don't censor Carl. Oh my God, here he goes. About okay, I only ever talk to ten people at one time. This is huge. Okay, for me. people, good stuff. Catch you later. Oh, All right, I kick Carl out. Why is he here? You fucking open the door. That's why. Let me get man. Out of here. I'm gonna have to keep that locked down. Is he, boy, did did, did you get Carl the key to the, the podcast studio? I kicked Carl out. Well, how did Carl get? He probably made a copy when we had. So yeah. our sign off, guys. Yeah, awesome. man. Good show. Good. This was amazing. Good looking out, Stephen. For now that Stephen's back, good looking out, Stephen. For uh, you know, getting Blake on the show. This was legendary, yeah, was iconic. Another fucking ch -ch -ch banger. Another fucking iconic episode banger. from your team on Filter Reptiles podcast. Make sure you tune in. Um, Saturday we'll be dropping the Carl's Conservation Corner. Jesus. Saturday. It. We're dropping. We will right, he, Carl's gone again. He, he can, you know, he can do his own podcast. Uh, we will be. We will be dropping <laughs> our next podcast Saturday morning, nine a.m. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, and then also make sure you guys. Uh, what I was going to say something else. Now my fucking mind's blank, but it's all good. Must You've be been yeah. raptured by Carl. Carl needs a dab to shut the fuck up. Is what Carl needs. <laughs> I don't think I don't he can know. handle it. I, I, I would not do a dab. Um, shout out to the comment winner. Cool person, right? Mm -hmm. Big I think shout we'll, out. Uh, 
reach out to that person. Shout out to the sponsors, Cold Blooded Cafe, www.coldbloodedcafe.com. Shout out to John over at Sim Containers. Um, And then make sure you guys also follow us on Instagram, please. I highly uh, appreciate that. Um, More followers on Unfiltered. Yeah, come on. Help us out. We'll do, we'll, we'll do something exciting too. I'm going to think of something exciting. I'll see what we're we'll laughing on it. But, like, you know, it's the best podcast in reptiles. Like, you know, people guys. What, what I'm saying is, guys, anybody who tunes in to, because, you know, guys, you know, you, we get a lot of good support and, I, and I, I love it. But make sure when you guys are tuning in that you're hitting the subscription oh, button. Hey, Fuck shit. that dog. God. Jeez. Oh, Jeez. Trying to get the most important part out of there, guys. Come, come Please. check out my weekend staff. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button. Oh, like the oh, bell. Is oh, this, is, this is how it actually. This is how it happens. And here we go. You got to have the employees. Employees got to step their. You know. Uh, how how how's, how's how's working the weekends here, Nick? Um, not that bad at all, really. Oh, a, a positive comment from Nick. No, you don't get those often. He looks like he gets beat. <laughs> Dude, Reese, no. What, what, when you come here, he's he's the Thanks, plug. Uh, Nick's the plug. Okay. MJ, you got it. Plug what? The plug and for weed. For the MJ. I'm gonna plug him up. How about that? I'm gonna come. You tell him. You got a customer. I can't hear you, but way. Tell him I'm gonna be coming with some of that Walter White. You feel me? Oh, oh no. What? He's got some, he's got some. Walter White. Okay. See that? See how white that is? There's and it's not. Kids that watch this show, MJ. Yeah, it's illegal. It's legal in California, baby. It's Come on. California. It's decriminalized here, so you know what's the worst that could happen. All right, shout out to everybody tuned in. Can't wait for the next episode. It's been hot. See you guys next time. Late. Bye.